morning, you beauties. Welcome to it. Thank you so much for waking up with us this morning. Definitely. Good morning. Good so, morning, so. G-Man. Listen, I know it is midweek on mm -hmm. your Feel Good Breakfast show, but for a lot of people, it's a fake Friday. If you took Friday off, this is a long weekend. I like it. I'm, I'll sign me up. I'm there. <laughs> I absolutely love it. We're going to do it in style this morning, of course. We're going to cook and we are going to eat. And we've got uh, Chumi Mohai, um, Chef Linda, also joining us in the kitchen for our culinary hotline. Bling! Ding, 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 ding! So if you're a young foodie looking to be inspired, these are two young people who are on an incredible trajectory and they're here to have a little bit of fun with us Definitely. This we're actually going to put them into a bit of a challenge. You know, we're going to put them through the espresso omelette challenge. Yes. And it's going to be up to you to judge which of them does it the best. Then we also have content creator, Constantia mom, Cassidy Nicholson, who will be joining us in studio to share her journey of being an all-round creative on social media, plus joining us for some entertainment gossip. Mm, and you know she's going to put her own edge, her own spin on it, and we love it. And then entertaining us this morning are musicians Jabolili, Jabolile, Majola and Yoab. They are here to, I think, officially make this long weekend start. And of course, they're going to be chatting about and giving us a little taste of their upcoming album, Un Yazi, which sounds spectacular. We cannot wait for the sound checks to begin and for us to immerse you in that. It's going to be a fantastic morning. Oh, definitely. Something else that's also fantastic is that we get to connect with you when we say good morning on social media. So let's take a look at today's morning post. Mm, so are you using the public holidays for a long weekend escape? Oh, I hope you are. Or do you plan on traveling locally with the family? What are you going to be getting up to? Share your plans with us. Let us know on our uh, uh, voice note line 0634088863. That's the WhatsApp line to use or you can use any of our social media platforms. Um, and if you've already headed out, we want to see pictures, we want to see videos, we want to revel in you having a good time because that's what the next three hours are all about. So we'll get this ship out of port in just a moment. But first, uh, let's bring you up to speed with what went down yesterday in the news and sporting headlines. Thank you, Graham. Let's start off with national headlines. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Nosa Viwe Mapisa Nkakula, is maintaining her innocence in the corruption allegations levelled against her. This after the National Prosecuting Authority conducted a seize and seizure procedure, search rather, at her home in Bruma, Johannesburg, yesterday morning. A subcontractor had alleged that she paid the Speaker 2.3 million rand in bribe money during her tenure as Defence Minister. The subcontractor, Nombasa Ndlovu, was herself arrested for allegedly defrauding the South African National Defence Force of approximately 40 million rand in 2020. She is out on bail of 80,000 rand. And the department, the Gauteng Department of Health, says it's aware of only 11 health institutions that are still without working telephones. These include the Chris Hani, Baraguanas, Charlotte Matreke and the Steve Biko hospitals. The DA spokesperson for health in Gauteng, Jack Bloom, earlier claimed that some 80 clinics and 30 hospitals' phones were out of order due to unpaid bills. A spokesperson for the department said outstanding bills would be paid by the end of this week. Moving to news beyond our own borders, Ethiopia's largest commercial bank is scrambling to recoup large sums of money withdrawn by customers after a system glitch. The customers discovered early on Saturday that they could draw more cash than they had in their accounts at the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia. Some $40 million was withdrawn and it took several hours for the bank to freeze transactions. Most of the money withdrawn was by students, Bank President A.B. Sano said on Monday. News of the glitch spread across universities largely via messaging apps and phone calls. And Hong Kong has passed a tough security law which authorities say is necessary for stability but which critics fear will further erode civil liberties. Article 23 targets new offences such as external interference and insurrection and penalties include life sentences. It was fast-tracked through the final stage of the city's pro-Beijing parliament in less than two weeks. The vice president of China said swift enactment of the new legislation would protect core national interests and allow Hong Kong to focus on economic development. 
And this actor must embody a movie star, be a cultural ambassador, a media diplomat, be good looking with global recognition, and most importantly, be the epitome of Britishness. Of course, we are describing the next James Bond. Speculation now swirls once again as British actor Aaron Taylor Johnson is reportedly offered the iconic role. Taylor Johnson, 33 years of age, has acknowledged the rumours with charm, seeing it as a compliment. He's favoured by the bookmakers, competing with contenders such as Henry Cavill, James Norton, Tom Hardy, Idris Elba and Chris Evans for the 26th Bond film after No Time to Die. This casting decision not only stirs immeasurable excitement, but also reflects the ongoing allure of the legendary 007 character in cinema. Well, that is where I leave those headlines. Let's take a first look at your sport. Thank you so much. So let's start with some footballing news. Never shaken, never stirred. This star has the chops. We go to Manchester United's camp now, where rising star Kobe Mainu has received his maiden call-up to the English squad for the upcoming friendlies against Brazil and Belgium. Talk about a test. So the 18-year-old midfielder, he has been a stand-up performer for United this season, very much a part of the good times and earning recognition for his impressive display, so much so that Gareth Southgate's admiration for Mainu is very event. And the youngster is now now, given the opportunity to showcase his talents and compete for a spot in England's squad for the big one, the Euro 2024 tournament. Now let's turn to rugby and get the tail of the tape. Bundy Aki stands out as the sole nominee from Ireland's back-to-back -back Six Nations Championship winning squad for the tournament's Player of the Year accolade, and justifiably so. The New Zealand-born displayed um, some remarkable prowess, recording an impressive 144 metres in contact, the highest among all players in the championship, in fact. Then England's Ben Earl joins Aki with Scotland's Duan van Merva and Italy's Tommaso Mononcello as the nominees along. Side him, but he's going to be a tough one to beat. Now we turn to tennis and Davis Cup champions Italy. They've been drawn into Group A alongside some formidable opponents, Belgium, Brazil and the Netherlands for the finals group stage in September this year. So hosted in Bologna in Italy, will um, they'll obviously enjoy a home advantage as they strive to defend their title one through their stellar performance of Yannick Sinner, who's just had the most phenomenal season. Then in Group B, last year's runners-up Australia, they will contend in Valencia against the Czech Republic, France and Spain. And the top two teams from four groups will advance to that final eight knockout phase in Malaga in November. That it's going to be a tight one. We love it. Now we turn to the Olympics very much on the horizon and some more bad news. Unfortunately, the International Olympic Committee announced that athletes from Russia and Belarus will not participate in the parade of athletes at the opening ceremony of the Paris 2024 Olympics. Of course, just around the corner in July. This decision comes in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine that started in 2022. Athletes from the two countries who qualified for the Games will compete as independents without their national flags and anthems. And I think it makes a massive difference. Instead, they will compete under a specially created flag with anthem, um, without an anthem uh, that has lyrics. And then the opening ceremony, which will take place on the River Seine, will see teams floating past an et estimated 300,000 spectators. Um, so it would have been a magical moment. But that's where we leave our sporting headlines for now. We'll touch on those headlines again at around 7 o'clock. Brand new day. It's hump day, close to a long weekend. Let's find out what the weather has in store. Thank you, Graham. Let's start off with news from the South African Weather Service. They have issued a yellow level 2 warning for severe thunderstorms, bringing potential heavy downpours, hail, damaging winds and excessive lightning. This may result in localised flooding, service disruption due to power surges and life-threatening situations across the eastern parts of the northwest, Free State, Gauteng and the high felt of Mpumalanga. Additionally, extremely high fire danger conditions is forecast for the Kamisberg local municipality area and the central northern Cape. Moreover, a heat wave with persistently high temperatures is expected in the northwest, free state and central eastern parts of Northern Cape until tomorrow. And it's extending until Friday in the northeastern interior of the Eastern Cape. Remember to share those sunrise views with us on our WhatsApp line. That number is 063-408-8863. Let's take a look at your temperatures for today.
well up in Tin almost there, man. Oh, I promise you we'll get below 30 at some point, but we'll hang on to that sunshine just a little bit longer because that's what we feel inside because we're going to bring you the most incredible story, a journey unlike any other, as we meet five very special pups, maybe one or two of them in person, Ooh. so to speak, that have made a journey all the way from cages in Cambodia, where they were destined for the illegal meat trade, to tears here in South Africa where they are waiting their new home. And hopefully we can connect you to your future fur baby this morning, but we'll delve into their unbelievable journey in just a moment. Oh, and someone that always goes on the most incredible journeys is Kukle, and she's got a very special mountain lodge that she wants to share with us. So don't go anywhere. We'll be looking at that in just a bit. It's my feel-good Oh, a very good morning. If you've just woken up, we're going to greet you with the best possible news. But it does have a very dark undercurrent. So let's start there. In 2021, local authorities in Cambodia intercepted a van carrying 61 live dogs en route to a slaughterhouse, destined undoubtedly for the dinner table. I know, let that sink in. Thanks to a law passed banning the dog meat trade in that area and the team of Four Paws' relentless advocacy, they were spared this unthinkable fate. And a few weeks ago, five of those pups completed the odyssey from Cage to Cape Town, where they will now hopefully find their perfect match. And it could be you are joining us from this incredible dream, uh, dream team representing Four Paws. Bertha Moriane, welcome to... Uh, what feels like the most incredible opportunity to do something so special for these individual pups, but it speaks to an horrific bigger picture. So maybe we should start there. So I'm going to say congratulations. Thank you. First of all, for getting this right, because I know you. a lot of different threads had to come together. Yes. 
The trade is illegal, we know that. It is still very much active. Can you set the scene for us? How, what are the numbers like in that area? Just maybe give us a bit of background to the trade in that part of the world. Um, thanks, Graham. So we work in Southeast Asia. So we basically focus on three countries. These are Indonesia, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Uh, and the numbers in Asia total, we are looking at 30 million cats and dogs that are traded for their meat annually. And then with Southeast Asia, we are looking at 10 million of those cats and dogs, and then majority of them being dogs. Um, and Four Paws had been very instrumental in advocating for a ban of the dog and cat meat trade in Southeast Asia, which is why when the authorities intercepted the minivan that was carrying 61 dogs en route to, their, to a slaughterhouse, the dogs were released into the care of Four Paws. And of course now here in Cape Town with Tears Animal Rescue where it's kind of a halfway house where hopefully we'll find a home for them. Why? Why go to this length? There is so much standing right around us, but there is a particular story here. There is something going on with these pups that makes it so important. Why did you guys go to such lengths to save these incredible little pups? So we raise awareness globally. This is a global campaign. Um, in fact, I would say we just have over 2 million signatures wow. of people globally that have signed the petition to say we want the facing out of the dog and cat meat trade in Southeast Asia. So for us, we looked at this as an opportunity to come and speak about the dog and cat meat trade in South Africa uh, for many reasons. And one of them being that when it gets faced out in Southeast Asia, we do not wish for it to be spilling over to our area. So we want to bring these welfare issues. That's the number one. Number two, I think we look at these dogs as ambassador dogs. We yes. see them providing a voice to many of the dogs or millions of the dogs that are stuck in the trade. So we hope to not disappoint the many million of dogs that are still stuck in the trade and be able to speak about this dog and cat meat trade. Looking at the little faces inside those cages, this is a very difficult space to work. Mm. What was that moment like when you first saw the pups, when they ha arrived, bearing in mind everything that had happened up until that point? What was that moment like? It was um, a mixture of different types of emotions. Uh, one was we were grateful that they made a safe journey from Cambodia to South Africa. Uh, but more than anything, it was so fulfilling that we were managed to save these dogs and bring them here. And hopefully we can embark on a happy ending for them and find them homes in South Africa. So it was a beautiful moment. Uh, but also still very sad for the many dogs that are still stuck in the trade. Because that's the, the reality here is, and, and we've got to kind of get over ourselves because we're speaking about animals that we've domesticated. So yes. we have a very special emotional connection to them. But animals are being treated like this or worse in many farms, in many places. We are talking about some of our wild icons. Mm. This is a global problem yes. and, a, and we are finding global answers, but there is something about what South Africans can do, our understanding, our connection to the wild, our beautiful animal totems. I love the fact that you're making us, um, giving us that opportunity to be ambassadors in that sense. What then do we need to do to support this global network that, that's represented by Four Paws? How can we help you guys? Thank you. So we have a global petition, it's still ongoing. And basically with this petition, if you sign it, you give us more voices to speak to the authorities in Southeast Asia and Cambodia, Vietnam, to say this is the many people in the rest of the world that are seeing this as a threat to tourism, as a threat exactly. to even human health, because there are, there's an emergence of zoonotic diseases that are relatable to the very trade. So I think it's signing the petition. Uh, but why we are here today, also the biggest thing is that if there are South Africans out there with big hearts, would like you to re cons very consider uh, adopting these dogs into your families and giving them a happy ending. And Graham, it's very difficult, I think, to say for sure that these dogs were strays or were somebody's pet, because the reality of the trade is that some of the dogs would be snatched as family pets. So the pet theft is a big problem in Southeast Asia. So some of them could be coming from beautiful homes, but then had to be taken into this trade and seen very horrific things. But then we had a team on ground in Cambodia that has worked on them, rehabilitation, socializing them. And it's been three years and we're very happy with these five final dogs. We think they're at the right state of mind. Um, they definitely are. I cannot wait to meet them. We've got a couple of the pups in studio this morning. The bottom line is they are more than just survivors. Yes. They are totems for us to gather behind. But at the heart of this is just a beautiful little pup 
that needs a home. A happy ending, a happy ending. to their incredible journey, and it could be you. We'll give you all the details of how you can delve in. You can sign up at Tears, and we'll keep those details up to become a potential fur parent. And then hopefully next week we can have a little bit of fun doing some matchmaking and unite the fur family all together. But these pups have earned that at the very least. Now it's time for us to pay it forward. Well, be in it to win it when you play Lotto. Lotto plus one and Lotto plus two for listen to 16, in fact, million rand in total estimated jackpots today. That means this Wednesday. And you could become Mzanzi's next millionaire. Now, you stand a chance to make it rain loads of cash this month of March by playing Lotto for an estimated 7 million rand, Lotto plus one for 7 million rand, and Lotto plus two for 2 million rand today. But if you want to stand a chance to win, you need to buy those tickets. And if you can buy your tickets today in store, you can buy them on the nationallottery.co.za website. You can buy your ticket on the mobile app through your cell phone banking or by simply dialing star 120 star 7529 hash for USSD. Now, all of the purchasing and jackpot details are on our social media channels, so don't get left behind. But you have to panda, push up, play lotto, lotto plus one, and Lotto Plus 2 today, and you stand a chance to win 16 million rand in total estimated jackpots this Wednesday. Well, that is where we are leaving things right now. When we get back, we have more to explore when it comes to the cage to cape, and that is all that we want to share with you today. And someone is going to win 2,000 rand in cash. That is one lucky viewer, and you'll need to stay tuned to find out who that is. It's my feel-good Well, hopefully you feel the same way about us right now. We believe that there is no love, no love quite like a dog's love or loyalty. And we also believe in the power of second chances. We have seen it on this show. So we have in studio that opportunity for these incredible pups. They've been saved from the illicit dog meat trade in Cambodia. They've journeyed across the globe. They've gone through the most rigorous rehabilitation process. And I'm looking at two of these gorgeous pups right now, alongside two gorgeous human beings, Lara van Rensburg and Luke Kreitz. And yes, Bertha, equally as 
gorgeous joining us from Four Paws. Thank you so much for sticking around. Um, Luke, I'm going to start with you because you've, you've been my adoption plug-in for a long time to, because you take this so seriously. You effectively become the part-time parent for many of these pups. Um, when you first heard about this story, this narrative, and these dogs coming back to South Africa or coming to South Africa, what went through your mind? What was your, your first fear? How, talk us through those emotions, because you know the space. Um, I think first fear definitely was where on earth are we going to put them because we're always chock a block full. We've always got a 300 or so waiting. Go. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, it was a once off opportunity to help um, these pipe doggies and kind of help with a global crisis for the dog meat trade. So we were super excited to welcome them at tears and try and find their happy ever afters. Um, and we're going to do it. We are yeah. definitely going to do it. <laughs> I'm worried, Bertha, if I look at you for too long, I'm going to burst out crying. Because <laughs> I can feel the waves of emotion here. But that's what dogs are to us. They're a part, a connected part of our emotional set. That's why we, we have such a deep connection to them. So, Laura, if you will, please introduce us to the pups that are here this morning. Well, this is Maximov. In fact, Luke can probably talk more about it because he's more part of our kennel team. I had a fundraising, but Maxi is lots of fun, a bit of a goofball. Yeah. And this is Shadow, who's a lot more shy um, and younger, in fact. And Luke can probably give you a little bit more insight into their personalities, but they're both incredibly loving. Um, and Maxi, actually, I think is cat friendly. He's passed the cat friendly test. Was that right? Um, Shadow passed the cat. Oh, yeah, right. She okay. was the most um, susceptible to be with kitty cats. Um, Maximoff is definitely the most confident out of all the fat doggies that oh, come really? to us. Yeah. It's, it's the Mohawk that does it for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's a beautiful, and he's got a powerful name, exactly. which, you, which you want. So, Luke, what goes through your mind when you think about rehoming dogs like this? Because you haven't been there for the full part of this, you know, yeah. their, their journey. What are your fears when they come to you, and how have these dogs reacted in your care? Um, shame that when they arrived at tears, they were really nervous uh, from the traveling to South Africa, obviously with the planes, but also in quarantine kennels as well. So they weren't really interacted with, um, with much with people. Um, but after the first couple of days at tears, they really started coming out of their shell. Um, shame due to their whole past history and their story, they're quite mistrusting of new people. Um, but it's really good for them to be at a shelter because they learn to rely on different people and form bonds with new people, which is really important. Um, shame they've come a long way from um, since being since arriving at Cape Town and then also at their shelter in Cambodia. They had them for about two years there as well. So, yeah, I think the, always our fear is making sure we're homing the right dogs, the right family. So doing a really good matchup and making sure that the dog's going to be happy with the family and the family's going to be happy with the dog. Equally as important. Exactly. So, Laura, maybe that's a good, a good point to get to, is, mm. is what families need to be aware of when adopting any dog, never mind just these five dogs, which I think are definitely destined <laughs> for homes in Cape Town. Um, but what do we need to consider when we want to adopt a dog and if we want to step up and adopt one of these dogs or all of these dogs, if we can accommodate, um, how, what does that process look like? You know, I think what's, what I think Tears is, is good at is that we always say it's a matchmaking process. So our yeah. kennel team is amazing in terms of just matching profiles. So people really send in what their needs are. We, we really investigate that process because I think it's about a gelling. It's a chemistry. It's them fitting into your family dynamic. I think what's amazing about dogs, and they, they prove that, I think these two, and in fact all of them have proven that um, animals and pets generally are so resilient. You know, the amazing, the amazing, they have amazing hearts to forgive, trust again. Um, and build relationships, but it does take time. And I think that's something that we would always say to any uh, family or, or individual who's looking to adopt, is just give them time, because it takes time to adapt. But just wow. as it would for us to, to go through any kind of Absolutely. significant Absolutely. shift like that. Absolutely, but I think the point is, um, you know, I think it's all about finding the right home and finding the right fit. They are amazing, and we'd love for people to come through, come meet them. I think, it's, you know, we've obviously got their profiles on our website, but I think it'll be great if we, we're having a lot of open days. Come and see them firsthand, for sure. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, and we're going to have a little bit of matchmaking fun once the adoption uh, applications come through next week. We're going to hopefully play matchmaker and see if we can find the perfect personality fit right there. Bertha, we are looking at our pets here. We... we and it's almost like this story is too difficult or ugly for us to digest, so we just leave it alone. But when you talk about the millions of dogs and cats, uh, pets that we would have at home that are destined for the fate that they were destined for, why is it so important in your heart of hearts that we do this and we get this right from our little voice, our little pulpit in, in South Africa? Yeah, 
I mean, as I said before, I think um, the dog and cat meat trade is one of the biggest threats to companion animals globally. We don't know at the scale it, it's happening because of the nature of it. It's very illicit and it's very undocumented and unregulated. So we don't know. We could be talking about more millions than I mentioned earlier. So it's very important, I think, that these ambassador dogs uh, find a happy home and the story goes out there. And I think South Africans are aware of the trade and then they would not allow it to spill over to our region. I Completely. think it's about safeguarding our region so that we don't have the same problem that Southeast Asia is facing. Also, maybe that we're taking our own dogs and their welfare completely for granted because this story, while the trauma might look different, the trauma is there for so many South African dogs and cats. Yes. And that's why the, the organisations like Four Paws, like Tears Animal Rescue, your work, um, and often unthanked, unrequited, <laughs> you just go out there and do it, mm. is absolutely amazing. So th thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just thinking about the stories that you can tell when you've got this pup and uh, just how magical that ending to this incredible journey could sure. be if we can find them a home here in South Africa, which I'm Undoubtedly, we'll do. So head over to the Tears website um, and you can take that first step towards becoming a fur parent and we will certainly help you in any way that we can and then have a little matchmaking fun on the show next week um, in hopefully celebration of these gorgeous dogs taking one step closer to their forever homes. To Maximoff, to Storm and the rest of these amazing pups that are now Cape Tonians officially welcome to South Africa. Oh, thank you, G-Man. Well, when it comes to being parents, that parental joy often finds its fullest expression in the health of our children. And Bernardo gave you the chance to win 2,000 Rand cash by naming one of the four additive frees in the new grape and telling us why the Bernardo grape is the clear choice for you as a parent. And this is what Sharon had to say. Sharon said, Bernardo, that grape is sugar-free and alcohol-free. So the kids are happy to get a dose when feeling sick. Hashtag power to fight pain. Hashtag Panado SA. Now we have Sharon on the line. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning. Congratulations. You are the winner of our 2,000 Rand cash. How does it feel knowing that you've won the cash thanks to Panado? Oh, wow. That's just amazing. Totally amazing. Oh, because seeing your baby in pain can be so hard, and just knowing that you have a lot makes life so much easier. Oh, see, that's that's what I want to hear. So early in the morning, Sharon, how will this money come handy? What what are your plans on how you're going to spend this two thousand rand? Not only have you stock up on Pinardo, but I can also treat my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. To some oh, you know, I think that's probably one of the best. It's not only your kids, but your grandkids. Now, Panado, it is such a generational brand. Tell us your first memory with Panado. Well, I remember when I was in my primary school, my mom holding the children, living in the cupboard in the kitchen, and I ran into the Panado when I had fever before leaving to school. And because I know that she uses Panada, I started using Panada on my own children and now also my granddaughters. So it's a no blame. It's always Panada in the public. That's so amazing to hear. And I know now with your grandkids, even your kids are using it with their kids. Well, Sharon, Welcome. congratulations. That 2,000 Rand is yours. And we also want to just say a very big congratulations to all of our winners. We know that Panado has given you a great win all around with the addition of the new syrup and a whopping 2,000 Rand cash. New Panado Grape Flavor Syrup, colorant, tartrazine, alcohol, and sugar-free. Giving you the power to fight their pain in a new flavor that is great. I mean grape. It's a clear choice in fast pain and fever relief.
like a mother knows, like the constant your mom knows. Cassidy is yeah. I don't, don't act all self-effacing, okay? Oh um, you are worth it, and she is worth it. She's absolutely amazing. One of the funniest content creators in the land, and she is here to serve us this morning. Um, and then, of course, we're going to get major, major jealous. Why? Because Kutla is heading off to another magical destination, the Kambati Mountain Lodge, which looks and sounds majestic. Um, we are going to be heading that way. Well, unfortunately, I can't take you to the mountain lodge this morning. I'm sorry, I'm but leave. you can do it I'm yourself. Leave. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to a very feel-good edition of your feel-good breakfast show. And of course, we've got Easter around the corner, which is making us feel even better. It's the perfect opportunity to hashtag TravelWise Mzanzi, discovering the beauty, the diversity of this incredible country that's been gifted to us while spending, most importantly, some quality time with the people we love the most. Definitely. And the best part is Short Left is offering a wide range of affordable and accessible experiences, ensuring that every Everyone can find something that suits their interests and most importantly their budget. Yeah, thank you for saying that because we'd all love to go on massive holidays all over the world but we can't afford it. Why bother? Just stay in SA because we've got the best. The whole world comes here. So let's follow that trend and the hashtag seat at the table. It's a movement and it beckons South Africans to bring their dining experiences anywhere across South Africa this Easter within the backdrop of our nation's breathtaking scenery. I love love this combination. Definitely. Do you have any fond memories um, of how you used to spend Easter growing up? Um, my mom was brilliant at getting us away for like little bush breaks and things like that. And I've spoken a lot about it on the show. Like she would make magic happen. She would make gold out of lead for these moments. And I remember going to the uh, mountains within KZN where we just had the most incredible bush experience. And it was in darkness and it was just this kind of wild experience. And I remember that being the first taste of South Africa for me of understanding, okay, this is the country that we live in and I love it. So that's something I'm constantly trying to emulate with my kids. Oh, mm. I can imagine. And I mean, Easter weekend's coming up next weekend. Any plans with the family? Um, we've got um, our mom-in-law is out yeah. um, from, the, from the UK, so it's just a lot of family time, trying to squeeze in as much time with her as possible, and obviously with the little ones. So it's, we're going to be very much within our little bubble, I think, over Easter. It's going to be great. What are you doing? You've got we've, sis out right now. We've got family too, and I think the beauty, and you know this with your mom-in-law being here, is you get to play tourist within Cape Town. You get to do the things that you always say, Oh, I really want to do that. And now you do it with your friends and family. And, and with that emotional you get case. to play 
tourists. I was going to say, well, you can pretend that you're actually on holiday, <laughs> um, which is amazing. Some of us have to pretend, um, but in a country <laughs> like this, it is very easy to do that. I love this movement. We want you to hashtag take your hashtag seat at the table this Easter and hashtag travel wise Mzanzi. And you can do it in so many different guises from hiking trails, incredible city tours, uh, even yoga on the beach, water sports activities, wine tastings. There is so much more to experience in unique and unforgettable settings as well. So go out there and experience it. Definitely. And the best part is it's so affordable with short left freedom to experience at your own pace and discover hidden gems right here in Mzanzi. Whether you are seeking adventure, relaxation or cultural immersion, there's something for everyone to enjoy right here in our very own backyard. I love it. Purpose-driven travel. Add that why to why you are traveling. You can gather your family and friends, pack your bags and then embark on an Easter adventure. And remember to travel safe. Mzanzi, don't take any chances but make sure your first stop is shotleft.co.za where you can delve into some of those exciting activities and the super affordable deals to do just that. Go oh. out and explore. Well, we are talking about traveling and with the Easter weekend, we keep saying it, it's around the corner, but it is a long weekend and I think that's why we are so excited. And if you are still looking for the perfect holiday destination, then we've got you covered. Well, we say we loosely. Kutle has got your back, okay, as she always does. We sent our beautiful Kutle to experience the beauty and charm of the Kamati Mountain Lodge, courtesy of Tourism KZN, who are just superstars. So you can plan your itinerary right now. Take a look. Welcome to this hidden gem, Kambati Mountain Lodge in the heart of Camberg Valley in Drakensberg. Now, Easter is fast approaching and everyone is looking for the perfect destination and escape like no other. So come along with me to explore the tranquility and beauty of this magical place. Stella Yangu, how are you? Thank you so, so much for welcoming me. This place is breathtaking. You mean to tell me you wake up to this every day? You never get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what makes Bambati Mountain Lodge so special? How does it give visitors, you know, that KZN feel? Oh, when I think of KZN, I just think of the mountains. This picture in my head, and with Kambati Mountain Lodge being in the heart of, of the Drakensberg, it's just perfect picture for me. So at Kambati, we have only five rooms at the lodge, so we focus on the adults, just to escape from the reality, just to escape from the hustle and the bustle and the city, just to come and really relax. Now that I'm all settled in, it's time to fill the belly with some deliciousness ahead of an exciting day. Ooh, this looks so good. So this is produced by my husband, Franco Esposito. We enjoy supplying local people, and I hope you enjoy it very much, Kushle. I'm here from the Gourmet Greek. This is our range of cheese that we produce. We produce all of this in a style that is science meeting passion, so it's handcrafted. We try to keep it as natural as possible. Oh my goodness, now this is a delightful culinary experience. The taste of KZN with locally sourced and produced food and ingredients. Mmm, mmm, mmm. We are surrounded by nature, which offers as the perfect backdrop for our workout right now. Nadia has something in store for us. We're taking it easy, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more about the yoga retreats that you offer here at Gambati Mountain Lodge. A couple of times a year, we offer retreats for our international guests where we would fly them from all over the world. Um, and we do a mix of yoga safaris. And then frequently, I will also offer weekend retreats for our local guys. Where do we start, Nadia? So let's start, let's hop on, on our feet. We're gonna start with sun salutations. 
let me tell you about yoga, okay? I underestimated yoga and how intense it was, but I would encourage everyone to try it out because you reach parts of your body that you didn't even know existed, and ultimately you get to a point of full-on relaxation. Sometimes it's really good to just slow it down a little bit. What stood out for me when it comes to the cuisine here in Camberg at Gambati Mountain Lodge is the fact that the produce is locally sourced, so it's fresh, always in season. What you eat, what you see, you know where it comes from, you know who produced it, and it just adds that personalized touch that, you know, one can truly appreciate. Honestly, I might come back just for the food. It's a brand new day. And you know what that means? Brand new adventures. I can't think of a better way to get the day started than connecting with nature, hiking, okay? Come along with me to explore more and experience more beauty from the Camberg Nature Reserve. My experience hiking this morning, nothing short of amazing. Connecting with nature, being surrounded by the green lush, vibrant landscape. It felt like I was in a painting that came to life. Mandoza, we woke up very, very early to be here. It took us about 40 minutes to reach this point, but it's so worth it. It's beautiful. How long have you been a part of Gambati Mountain Lodge and what has been your highlight? I've been here for, for, for over four years, so it's been four years and a half. The main highlight was working with Tom Cruise. Wow. Mandoza with Tom Cruise. How was that? How is he? He was a very nice person. Uh, we enjoyed um, working with him. He was very fit, um, <laughs> as well as he was very friendly, very calm. So it was very nice to have him as well. I'm going to take my horse to the Gambati Road and we are going to ride until we can't no more. Sean, it is such a pleasure to meet you. Please talk to us about your role here at Gambati Mountain Lodge and what you do with horses. Okay, so I'm the stud manager and the horse trainer here and I train our horses so that they are super safe trail horses. People can interact with them, have fun, have their confidence built, learn a new skill and enjoy connecting with our horses. So Sean, these are Appaloosa horses. Tell me more about that. What kind of breed is that? So these horses were bred by the Nez Perce Native American tribe in the USA. Uh -huh. You know, people were nomadic. So when they were traveling around, um, they needed horses that weren't going to run off and that were going to stay near their people and the camp and everything. And these guys are super friendly. And, and super excited. And super excited to get going. <laughs> we're slowing Bumbles down, I know, we are, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Mandoza and myself, Sise Benze, Kakuluman and We started very early with a hike, so it's only fair that we take it easy with a nice, flavorful mixology session right now. Creative juices flowing, right, Mandoza? Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I found the mocktail session super fascinating because, you know, we enjoy mocktails when you go out with your people, you order a mocktail, but you don't realize how simple, quick and easy you can make it yourself at home. So Umandoza showing me how to make the gambata special was a special session. I'm not even exaggerating. This is delicious. It's like a burst of flavor in your mouth. Oh my goodness, where do I even begin? My weekend here in KZN was absolutely well spent. We were outside hiking, yoga, horseback riding, and most importantly, enjoying local cuisine. I have to come back to spend the Easter break with my family, and I think that you should join us too. Don't you feel like Kuchle is just made for that glam travel life? Oh, like... for sure. Four <gasps> outfit changes, oh. one for every setting. Exquisite. Oh, man, you did the beautiful space just as well then. Definitely. And if KZN is on your bucket list, then you have to enter this incredible giveaway. How is this? Valued at 9,000 Rand. Mm, beautiful stuff. The Gambati Mountain Lodge is giving you the chance to win a two-night midweek stay, including breakfast, and they looked spectacular. Uh, five 
course, dinner, meal, and a picnic. Ooh. Simply head over to the Expresso Facebook, X, or Instagram platforms and tell us this. If you could take a midweek escape to Kambati with your favorite person in the world, who would you invite and why? And don't forget that hashtag KZN has it all. Definitely. And the competition closes on the 27th of March. So you have a couple of days to get those entries in. There are T's and C's that can be found on our website, expressoshow.com. So I think we all need to take a little bit of a break, go read those T's and C's mm -hmm. and get entering. But when we get back, we have Constantia mom, Cassidy Nicholson, in Yay. studio. And she's going to be hanging out with us and we're just going to be catching up with her. Oh, then I, I was talking about the sound checks earlier. There's a reason why we've entered into this other state of mind, a different emotional state. Yoav and Jabolila are here to blow you away this morning. It's a sound unlike any other. They are incredible. Stick around. We'll see you now. Are you auditioning and getting ready for Tropica Island of Treasure? Well, don't let joint and muscular pain hold you back. Deep Eat is your go-to warm-up solution and SA's number one choice. Oh, yes, and here's an extra incentive. The top seven contestants heading to the island will each receive 10,000 Rand from Deep Eat. And remember, you can upload your audition with the hashtag Deep Eat and the hashtag Tropica and tag MyTropica. Who knows? You could be competing in Zanzibar. Yeah, it's time to reach your full potential. Get Deep Eat and conquer the island. Shop for you, I don't work for you. Ali, please, can you come and get? It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel-good breakfast show. You're just in time because joining us right now is Cassidy Nicholson, also known online as the girl named Cassidy. Now, she is a TikTok content creator and an actress known for playing multiple characters, one of them being Constantia Mom. Let's take a look. Holly, Jack, I made burgers. Can you guys come dish up? I'm not going to dish up for you. I 
dish up. I'm not going to dish up for you. I don't work for you. Holly, please, can you come and get your food? <gasps> Jack, did you hear? Holly asked me, why did I get the seeded, the seeded buns for the burgers? So I told her plainly that, that you can't eat the white rolls because you kept me up all morning because you had diarrhea. So I thought to myself, Julie, it's not good for Jack to eat the white rolls. Ladies and gentlemen, Cassidy Nicholson in your in, in on your feel good breakfast show in your TV screens on our couch. Here Hi. we go. Hello, <laughs> hello. Tell me, how many kids does Constantia mom have? Um, one as an actual child, two if Gunks is included, okay. three if the new dog Tuli is included. Okay, okay, it's a very busy household. No, very busy household. Oh, my next question: Are you one of the Constantia moms that wears her gym pants when 100%. walking around? Hundred uh percent. -huh. And I haven't even gone to gym, and uh -huh. I have no intention of going. I've just got so many errands to run. <laughs> I yeah. love that. I love that. Okay, well, Cassidy, it's so wonderful having you here. You've got such a bubbly person. Personality, and I love that you're sharing it with the whole world. Awesome. But let's unpack your very colorful career because okay. it's so interesting. You are a professional actress. You're a certified screenwriter. You also have ideation and casting director. Well, that's all part of one umbrella. When did you decide this is the path you want to carve out for yourself? Because it's a very interesting direction. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, I think I knew I was a little bit left of center and a creative when my whole family was like, we all went to my cousin's place. You know how one does when you're growing up. And we went to my cousin's house and the rugby was on. And mm. I was like, mm, excuse me, no, we're going to the bri room. I put on a show. You guys are about to be very entertained. And I was just like that as a kid all the time, just, you know, practicing dances and making up plays and whatever. And I wasn't exactly doing it for free. No, they had to pay two rand okay. to watch those exclusive shows. And did they? Um, did no. they? No, they still <laughs> owe me money. Now that we're talking about it, guys. You need to, you need to claim it back with interest. Uh, exactly, you know. But it, it was something that I always loved to do. I, I came alive when I was on stage or performing or just creating some semblance of art. And I mean, I'm someone who believes in horizontal growth, not vertical growth. So whenever something didn't work out, I would try something else. I was in, you know, the industry, but you know, maybe if it wasn't acting, it was writing. If it wasn't writing, it was directing. And so that's how I've got this amalgamation of things. And it is a beautiful industry because it's fun, it's creative, it's yeah. different. And you've got a passion for it. It's yeah. something you keep wanting to explore so I completely get that yeah now stand-up comedy how have you found that because this is a Ooh. bit more of a newer avenue for you right yeah this has been really crazy um well my my best friend who is a stand-up comedian um, we actually met each other Nina Hasty we actually met each other at um, the content creator awards and she was like you are way too funny in real life to not be you know, a stand-up comedian, or at least exploring it. Mm. And and so she pushed me and I tripped and fell with a microphone <laughs> onto a stage. And that's just kind of how it started, you know? Um, just someone saying, you're really good. And, and then I was just writing and writing something that I know, so I felt comfortable doing that. And yeah, that's... The rest is history. Now the I do stand-up. <laughs> now you're adding stand-up comedian to your very expansive repertoire already. Mm. Now, TikTok, I know that is a platform where someone like you mm. thrive, yeah. someone like myself shy away from. And, and I feel like it's a platform because I don't really understand it. I find it intimidating. But for you, that's your playground. Yeah. How important is it for you to utilize these social media channels that you have? I think it's really important. I think, you know, these new social media channels that we have are our websites. It, it's, a, it's a visual uh, CV, if I may. And for me, I just found TikTok has been the one platform where you can be weird, wacky, wild, and people are like, yeah, same, mood. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, that's, that's totally me because, I mean, I'm not the most aesthetic person all the time. Why did I just, excuse me, just put them back in their holsters. <laughs> And I'm not the most aesthetic person all the time. I'm not the most curated person all the time. I believe in, you know, there being some authenticity, uh, authenticity, excuse me, authenticity present and rawness and realness. And TikTok has really just been a platform that has allowed me to do that. And that is wonderful because I feel like with someone like you, you need to see it all differently. I think of a kaleidoscope when I see you and it's just every angle you look at it, there's something different to see. So I think it's really cool that you're sharing that with everyone. Thank you. Now, lastly, staying active, 
being the Constantia mom that I'm now labeling you to be <laughs> in her gym pants that doesn't go to gym. Yeah. On a serious note, how important has staying active been for you, especially when it comes to that space of mental health? Oh my goodness. It's been, it's been an absolute game changer, lifesaver, all of the above. Um, I'm someone who, I'm such a, you know, big personality and, and so I just find that be, staying active really just grounds me and it like gets rid of all the anxious energy that I have. Um, and so it's just been something that I've fallen in love with. I'm also very competitive. Okay. So um, being active and now, you know, getting back into hockey has just been something that has just lit my life on fire in the best way. I was expecting you to say you're into CrossFit now. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I would have mentioned that first thing. I know. Isn't that such a CrossFit thing? They, they first mention they do CrossFit or they try and convince you to do 100%. CrossFit? 100%. CrossFit's vegans and boys who go to bishops. They're all the same WhatsApp group. <laughs> well, Cassidy's not going anywhere. She's going to be hanging out with us, so expect more of this bubbly energy right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Oh, it's just about the top of the hour. It's exactly 7 o'clock, in fact. So let's start our 7 o'clock news bulletin with some local news that has a global connection. So the Fiscus cannot afford to finance the level of investment that will be required for a climate-resilient infrastructure. That's according to Deputy Minister of Finance, David, uh, David Mosondo. And he says there has to be a global as well as an African approach in dealing with climate change, as its impact knows no boundaries. Mosondo was speaking at a policy dialogue titled Southern Africa Towards Inclusive Economic Development. And he added that investments in renewable energy sources, water conservation systems and sustainable urban development were key to mitigating and adapting to climate impacts. But the fact that we're having this conversation on that level is a positive notion in itself. Now, we stay in South Africa, where the Speaker of the National Assembly, Nosaviwe Mapisa Ngakula, is now maintaining her innocence in the corruption allegations levelled against her. This after the National Prosecution Authority conducted a search and seizure procedure at her home in Bruma in Johannesburg yesterday morning. Now, a subcontractor had alleged that she paid the Speaker 2.3 million rand in bribe money during her tenure as Defence Minister. The subcontractor, Nambasa Ndlovu, has uh, herself been arrested for allegedly defrauding the South African National Defence Force of approximately 40 million rand in 2020. She is now out on bail of 80,000 rand. So I think we will watch the story very closely. Now, we cast a wider gaze, and on the international front, UN agencies say northern Gaza could face famine by May this year without a pause in the fighting and a surge, massive surge in aid. U.S. Secretary of State Sir Anthony Blinken says Gaza's two million people are experiencing severe levels of acute food insecurity. They are starving. And this was the first time an entire population had been so classified. And he said when questioned about reporters about the conditions in the territory, now Blinken called on Israel to prioritize providing those in need with food. And his comments were among his sternest yet in setting out the scale of the humanitarian crisis currently unfolding in Gaza. Now, we move back to the African continent and Ethiopia's largest uh, commercial bank is now scrambling to recoup large sums of money withdrawn by customers after a systems glitch. So the customers, <coughs> excuse me, they discovered early on Saturday morning that they could draw more cash than they had in their accounts at the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia. Some $40 million was as a result withdrawn and it took several hours for the bank to freeze the transaction. So most of the money withdrawn was by students. Um, this according to Bank President Abe Sanu on Monday. News of the glitch spread across universities largely via messaging apps and phone calls. I can imagine they jumped on that one. Now let's round it off with a momentous unveiling. The Pan-South African Language Born, or Pansalb, in the Northern Cape has revealed the inaugural edition of the Nama Languages Spelling and Orthography Rules Book. This is a massive marker. And this endeavor, initiated in 2016, marks a significant milestone for Nama speakers, such as Willem Damara, who eagerly anticipates the newfound ability to embrace his language fully. 
and Pan Selb envisions this book as a vital resource for schools keen on incorporating and teaching Nama. It's now a possibility. But Choco Moremi, uh, Pan Selb's provincial manager, emphasizes the extensive effort, six years in fact, that it took in making and uh, all that went into crafting the rules specifically tailored for South African Nama context. It's brilliant. This initiative not only fosters linguistic education, but also preserves the distinct cultural heritage of the Khoi and San people that stand alone with their incredible journey. So good that they have this platform to enrich the culture and language. We love it. Well, on that very inspirational note, let's get into our sporting headlines. So let's kick it off with some really good news for young rising star out of the Manchester United camp, Kobe Mainu. He has received his maiden call-up to the English squad for the upcoming friendlies against Brazil and Belgium. Talk about a test. So the 18-year-old midfielder, he's been a stand-up performer for United this season, earning recognition for his impressive displays all the way to the top. Gareth Southgate has been very open about his admiration for Mainu, and the youngster now has the opportunity to showcase his talents and compete for a spot an England squad for Euro 2024, which will be massive. Now let's get the tail of the tape from rugby action that we've embraced recently. And Bundy Aki stands out as the sole nominee from the uh, from Ireland's back-to-back -back Six Nations Championship winning squad for the tournament's Player of the Year accolade, and understandably so. The New Zealand-born player displayed remarkable prowess, recording, get this, an impressive 144 metres in contact, that's with players on him, the highest among all players in the championship by quite a margin. Then England's Ben Earl, he joins Aki with Scotland's Duan van Amerve and Italy's Tommaso Mononcello as the nominees. Now we get back to tennis and the Davis Cup is heating up. Their champions, Italy, have been drawn into Group A alongside some formidable opponents in the form of Belgium, Brazil and the Netherlands for the finals group stage in September. So hosted in Bologna, Italy will obviously enjoy a home advantage as they strive to defend that title, one through the incredible performances of Yannick Sinner, who's having the, the season of his life at the moment. Then in Group B, last year's runners-up Australia, they'll have to contend in Valencia against the Czech Republic, France and Spain. The top two teams from four groups will then advance to the final eight knockout phase in Malaga in November. And we round off with um, more news ahead of the Olympics. And the International Olympic Committee has announced that athletes from Russia and Belarus will not participate in the parade of athletes at the opening ceremony of the Paris 2024 Olympics just around the corner now in July. And this decision comes in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine that started in 2022. So athletes from these two countries who qualify for the Games will compete as independents without their national flags and their anthems. Instead, they will compete under a specially created flag, a neutral flag, and anthem without any lyrics. In the opening ceremony, which is going to be a tough one to miss for these athletes, will take place on the River Sien with um, teams floating past an estimated 300,000 spectators. So heartbreaking that they won't be there, but we certainly understand why. And that's where we leave our sport for this hour. We'll touch on those headlines again at 8 o'clock. Let's get into the traffic. Thanks, G-Man. Well, let's start off with traffic in Germiston, Johannesburg. There's been a multi-vehicle accident on the N12 westbound. It's at the Galulis interchange. The middle lane is affected. Allow extra travel time. In Athlone in Cape Town, there's heavy congestion on the N2 outbound. It's at Jake's Harval Drive. Expect delays and please maintain a safe following distance. That's your traffic. Let's take a look at your weather. And news on Matters Water this morning is that Johannesburg residents are to face yet more outages as Rand Water's Akenorf pump station has tripped again due to a lightning strike on Sunday evening that hit the transmission line between El Dorado Park and Orlando pump stations. Affected areas include Brixton, Hurst Hill and Crosby. Earlier, a power failure at Akenorf caused a two-week outage in parts of the city. Johannesburg Water arranged alternative supply for affected areas. While Soweto and Randburg systems saw a slight drop, they are stable at present. The lightning strike underscores ongoing challenges in maintaining water supply, prompting authorities to take measures to address these disruptions. 
It is 7 a.m. and we love receiving your sunrise views. Geraldine from Glen Ken shared this beautiful view. You can see the sun rising in the distance. If you would love to share your view, do so on our WhatsApp line. That number is 63 Let's take a look at your temperatures for your Wednesday. in some places so just stay indoors for now because we're going to have a whole lot of fun and we're going to refresh you mm. with some refreshing meals why because it's the culinary hotline bling zing 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 <laughs> chef linda and the chef chumi 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 are here um yes we're going to put them through their paces they're going to battle it out with an omelet challenge and create something spectacular with all of these ingredients and then of course uh, jabalila and yoav are here to perform for us this morning they have a magical sound that you've got to plug into we'll catch up with them on the other side of this mm. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's Expresso on S3. And joining us right now, we have musicians Jabulile, Majola and Yoav as they will be chatting to us about their upcoming album called Unyazi. And it's so great to have you both here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank oh, you. Are you oh. comfortable? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always Very comfortable. When I see you doing your thing there, <laughs> you're in like a dream state. It's just crazy to hear you guys perform. And thank you so much for giving us just sound checks already this morning because nice. it's taken me to another place. <sighs> How do these threads tie together? And, and I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'm going to get a different perspective from both of you, but you sound like you were born of the same womb. You are so connected. How <laughs> you, did the you'll two... never know these days. Yeah, um. exactly. <laughs> um, but how did this, um. this incredible union come about? Do you want to answer that? Or um, yeah. I, um, so um, 
I, I have been doing my own thing for some time as well. My solo career and Jabu's been doing his thing. And um, around about the lockdown time, I taught myself to do a little production. Um, and um, a mutual producer friend was like, you guys should do some writing together and just see what happens. And I had no, I mean, I was like, I can't make a record. I'm not, I've always had someone that I tell <laughs> what to do. Uh, so we just got together and we wrote a song called Stranger and, and I, I was kind of just putting some beats down and, and then Jabu sent it to his label and they, they were like, we love this, do another one. And then we did another and we did another and, and then we eventually had a whole a whole album, so bless you for and, it. And bless you. And we for improved it. as we went along. <laughs> you got more seasoned. I feel like ah, it. you got more seasoned, like a good bottle of red wine. Yeah. Oh, now I, I want to know if you had to characterize your sound, your unique sound. What's the best way to to describe it? Um, I would say it's indie, uh, a little bit of a little bit of dreamy vibes within it, and 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 a lot more um, electronic. Um, elements to it, but it's also got a very f rich folk um, um, theme as well. Um, there's there's a few songs that sort of came about um, that that have a lot of African folk within them, a lot of African folk tales as well. Um, as I as we progressed within the making of the album, um, I started singing more in Zulu as we got comfortable with one another and all of that. So I'm from KwaZulu Natal, and and so you hear a little bit of it um, within the album. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm very. I'm just picturing you it. waiting for that moment to drop just a little. This is Zulu. Just I'm just exactly. throw it in there. I'm just gonna. <laughs> no, funny enough, it, it didn't come like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's uh, actually, coax it yeah. out. Yeah, Already? Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and now, now it's unstoppable. I'm oh, very, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, um, I, I think very precautious about certain environments and whatnot. Um, I'm also, I'm also very serious about not forcing something. Sometimes you just be like, I'm gonna make a Zulu song just because it's. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna you, smash you, an other piano you, because it's so actually, hot right now. Yeah. You know, you actually allow it to come out. You know, I think. Uh, I take music very seriously. I take everything about meaning super seriously. So it's something that sort of came about. Came <laughs> about Organically. You know? No, I love exactly. that. I absolutely love that. Oh. Yeah. What does that creative process look like? Because you're, you're telling stories here. Uh, there's something about the folk journey that takes us mm. through that kind of narrative. But it's got to start with something. Does it start with a word, with a lyric, with an understanding? How do you guys, because now it's not just one creative force, it's two yeah. that seem to click so beautifully together. What does that process look like? Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a, it's a heavy partnership. I think we are both individuals, so we both come with our own individual songs at times. Um, some of us come with our own individual experiences and then we both go into it together and then we sort of like piece it out, it and out exactly yeah. so um, it's a long process yeah. um, it's, working with someone like, like you are it's like extra long yeah. but <laughs> we get to the point it's amazing though it's an amazing process because I, I learned a lot of things I'm a very like okay I want to do yeah, this thing now and whatnot. Done, yeah. But like I learned to actually like take time. You know, my father taught me about storytelling and you take time to tell a story, you take time to create a story. And so that's been what the Do process. it justice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, justice, yeah. For yeah. Sure. I, I always wonder between a duo, who's the procrastinator and who is the let's get things done, let's tick the box. Um, I, I, would, I wouldn't say I'm the let's get things done guy. I'm just like a let's not think about it and get it done. And that's sometimes very harmful. Um, and I am quite a procrastinator as well. So I think we both I know, mild. Pretty, I would say we it. both mild procrastinators, oh. but we're also on it because yeah. we do finish it. And, yeah. and you've, um, you're proud of the products you, you put out there. Let's talk about your new song, Nyoni Yami. That's a very, very, very good. Uh, that's a good way of saying Nyoniyami. Thank you. Yeah. You said Nyoniyami. It is Nyoniyami. So um, the new song is called Nyoniyami. It's um, it, 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 in English. You say it's it, it's it's my bird, um, and it's about a blue swallow. So my father was very fascinated by blue swallows back in the day. Obviously. Um, in KZN, um, I mean, he used to tell me stories of of the resilience of a blue swallow. So I wrote this song in a. African parable type of style um, and it's a story of a bird that is um, orphaned you know it grows up without any parents and um, it goes through so much in the world that is created to, to destroy it but it chooses to sing the song of hope regardless of the situation that it finds itself in and you know um, a little bit of my story I was I was um, born in Peter Marisburg but I was adopted in Great Town I don't know my biological parents wow. you know um, and so many of us do go through certain situations in our lives um, but 
we can make a choice through my faith, through what I believe I'm a Christian, um, I was allowed, I was actually, um, uh, I've chosen to actually be that um, hope to other people, you know, so yeah. I love it. You know, right now there are people leaving their house to go and get blue swallow tattoos somewhere on their body because it means something. Do that. And then after that label is Nyo Niyami, just yeah. don't just yeah. put a blue swallow yeah, on Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love the fact that a small story, a seemingly small story, can speak to such a big picture. Yeah. So, gents, we're going to send you off you to go and yeah. do what you do absolutely the best. And, and we thank you. Thank oh, you. We thank love you. Thank you. Man. you. Um, this is a rare opportunity to hear two standalone creatives coming together to stand alone. They are so unique. Their sound is so beautiful. But most importantly, they have a story to tell and they're going to take us through that journey um, with two incredible performances. Um, and of course, it does include the first. The, the union was formed around one of these songs and we're going to get a double dose right now. Um, Yoav and Jabalani are standing by to take Take us to another reality. Enjoy. So um, this first song we're going to play is um, this is a song called Stranger. It's the first thing we wrote together, and um, it starts with the drum beat like this.
the next song we're going to play for you guys is called Nyoniami, and it's about a blue swallow. Jabolile, Majola, and Yoav are not going anywhere. In fact, we might keep them here for the rest of the week. They are truly, truly remarkable, and they're going to be giving us another performance in just a moment. Chef Linda, you enjoyed that one. I think so. <laughs> Chef Chumi is here. Are we going to have a little bit of fun? Why? Because it is the culinary hotline bling. Zing, zing, zing. The cooking begins after this.
Welcome back, you beauties. Your timing is perfect. Why? Because we're about to commence with the culinary hotline. Bling! Ting, ting, ting! Get ready for a clash of the titans today. Um, in one corner, we've got Chef Tumi Chumi Mochai, renowned for her innovative Afrofusion creations. She's making her mark in the world. And then in the other corner, we've got Chef Linda preparing. He got a little intimidated by Chumi's fire in her eyes. Now we'll bring him in for round two. And then, of course, we'll all create a dessert together. Um, but my friend... Yes. You know what I love about this job, and, I, and I'm sure I tell you this all the time, <laughs> young, young lady, is that I get to see the evolution. Yes. I get to see literally the first steps. I can remember when I was doing the voice work yeah. um, on the Tastemaster, and you started to have your moments. And I can remember turning to patients who, who runs this show, saying to her, ooh, there's something special about this girl. You were just so good, not just in the kitchen, but in that space. And now you're getting accolade after accolade after accolade. Thank you. Talk me through the recent nominations, yes. please. Yes, so I've been nominated uh, in the category of Top Chef in Africa in the Emerge Africa Awards. Get out. Which is a huge accolade because we're looking at the entire continent of Africa and we're looking at up against people like my friend and dear friend Chef Linda himself. We've both been nominated in the same category. And it is beautiful to just see, get the recognition, you know, after years. People think that my career only started when I joined the, the Cordova team. I've been in doing this for 10 years. So to see all that hard work finally It's your baby off. face, man. It's because you look so young, girl. <laughs> That's the thing. But you've got to earn your chops true. in this game. You Very really, true. really, really do. Um, and if you've got any culinary questions to plug into this, please do. 0634088863 is our WhatsApp line. If you've got any messages of support, congratulations, or any culinary conundrums, yeah. please fire away. So we're going to have a little bit of fun yes. in the kitchen today, <laughs> and you're going to represent the kind of cooking that you do. So what are we making first up? All right, so you know me for being the Afrofusion queen because I like to take our African flavors and take them to the rest of the world. So we're doing an omelette challenge today. So I decided to gasify the omelette. Oh, I like it. So we're going to be making something completely different. I've started heating up my oils here for the eggs, which we're going to be making uh, as the base, which is the omelette. And then I've also got some oil heating up here because we're doing a gassy hash. So if you know what a hash is, it contains some potatoes in there. It has some different kinds of meat, uh, different kinds of like fillings. It's whatever's left over in the fridge exactly. on Sunday morning <laughs> goes into the hash. Um, that's, that's the way it. we play it in my, my house. I love yeah. it. So, um, Go for it, go yeah, for it. Yeah, I've got my oil in there that's actually going to heat up quickly. So I just wanted to test with those fries there. So we've got slop chips mm. inside of our um, um, omelette today. And then we're also going to be adding all those flavors for me, which are very gassy. We've got your Russian, yep. we've got your Archer, uh -huh. we've got your French. Uh -huh. and that's why I have to say your French bologna. For, I know. <laughs> On the table, I was trying to, trying to do a link earlier and I just kept going back down to the French, man. It's there, it's there. I love it. Um, these are flavors that we love in their combination of each other, but it also speaks to the way that I think so many South Africans have to approach their food. They've got to make the best out of what they have in their pantry. Correct. Um, and it's ingenious how far we've taken it. We've got these South African staples that tell as much about our culture and where we've come from um, as they do about our palate and what we enjoy to eat. So you're kind of telling a little story every time you're cooking. And you know, a friend of mine said this to me yesterday and I was so, I was so honored to hear a friend, someone who's close to me actually say that that I like how he says to me I love how you take simple flavors and you make them just you know pop and that's a big thing for me because I grew up I grew up in Soweto a, a very a big town but a place where flavors just meld together in different ways because you had different cultures people from different parts of South literally Africa literally a Africa. melting pot yeah. exactly so being able to take all those different flavors and be able to put them together like for instance this is something you'd find in a Goda this is something you'd find in a Gatsby so for what sure. we're doing is I'm taking that and just make it fancifying it a little bougie little when bougie when I have a nice little coffee I love omelette it. in the morning <laughs> let's do that so, okay so let's talk about the omelette because this will. is often where people fall down it's not just a scrambled egg all together in a pan not what, what's all. the key to getting an omelette just right. Okay, cool. So I'm going to start by making sure that your pan is nice and hot. If you're not using a non-stick pan, there's a trick to make sure that it is non-stick on its own. So if it's a stainless steel, stainless steel pan, what you do is you put it on the, on the heat 
Let it sit there on its own without any oil, without anything. Just let it get up to temperature as hot as possible. Okay. Then you add your oil in the fee. If you want to test if it's right, just add a bit of water into it. Once you see the pearls of water sort of dancing, dancing around, around in your hand, okay. then you know that it's hot enough. Let those um, evaporate away. Once they've evaporated, you know it's now time to add your oil. And you've got a nice non-stick pan oh, that wow. you can use for anything. Just based on that heat temperature, just, that contact point temperature. That correct. is amazing. You've saved a lot of people. You've saved a lot of pans, I think, this morning. <laughs> Um, I love that. And it's all about, I suppose, in your space, coming up with ways that you can make cooking relatable. Correct. And that's what I've always loved about sharing a kitchen space with you is I always leave with intellectual property. I always leave with a tip, a trick, something that makes me feel chefified. I love um, that. <laughs> but, but that's key. When you're trying to kind of teach people or inspire people to cook, you can't make it all at a 10. It's sometimes you've got to start and work your way up and Correct. layer and build in those flavors. Um, okay, so the Russians, obviously, it's got a very distinct flavor, which I love. Yep. Um, the poloni also has a beautiful <laughs> meaty flavor as well, but it's the combination of these meats that just works so well. Correct, correct. Because normally what this would be done with is meats like your steaks, which tend to be a bit on the pricier side. Mm. But if you can get the stuff that, like I said, you get in Okota, this meal on its own, I can tell you is definitely less than 50 rand. Oh, for so sure. So you could feed yourself, you could feed your friend. It's something that's so easy to pull together because it's literally basic ingredients, but just try and make it in a different way and, and it's great proteins great flavor I great. love it and like you say it doesn't take too long and you can build a lot out of these base ingredients as well so you can do your lunch your breakfast your dinner exactly, all exactly. together yeah, well, so, now that's the thing I'm also all about taking the similar ingredients but changing them the, the way you approach them and how you use them in different ways just give people those aha moments I when didn't know I could yeah. do this with that yeah, exactly. exactly that's what I'm about <laughs> Oh right, man, so I'm, look, I'm a, I'm a protein kind of guy, so I'm just loving the protein on protein on protein, okay? The three Ps. The three Ps. <laughs> and the other thing is that that's important here is like you always say, which you, you just mentioned now, is about building flavor. So I've got the Acha flavor that's going to be the one that ties everything together to bring those memories back, you know? We're talking about a hash here. Like you can see what I'm doing is I'm crisping up my sausage here, my rush here, because I want to have those crispy bits mm, in there. And it's got the fats in it Correct. to lend itself to so that. This yeah. is our, our type of chorizo so you could see yeah, here in South sure. Africa. So I'm taking that and I'm just going to let it crisp up a bit. Once we're almost ready, then I'm going to add the rest of the French bologna because I don't want it to stick because the difference because of the moisture content. Very different this texture. Might stick. Okay. So we want to just make sure we add it towards the I end. I hope you guys have got little pads out and you're <laughs> taking notes down this morning because we are getting a master class. Okay. Yeah, I know I'm going in here, right? So I'm showing you a couple of different ways to do this. So basically when you do an omelette, you want to make sure you start with the egg. Once the egg is done, you then start layering then up the different add in flavors the, that the you. Ingredients and yeah. Such. So okay. for me now, the next flavor would be going in without cheese. I'm not going to add it yet. I'm just going to add it at the top. So I'm going to, in, in essence, do like an open omelet. Okay. That you can see the filling inside. I I can even see the, the kind of arithmetic, the culinary arithmetic uh, swirling around your head as you do this, that you're always kind of keeping an eye on the bigger picture and how it's all going to come together, um, but very focused on the individual elements and letting them sing. So it's not just a, okay, well, I'm adding chakalaka, so it's South African. Mm -mm. It's how best to add that chakala at the, chakalaka at the right time, in the right measure, to complement those flavors. Correct, correct. Wow, that is actually very correct. look at that omelette, man. So this is where you also guarantee because you've made sure that your pan is hot enough you guarantee that it's definitely not going to stick the only thing now is now that it's gone up to temperature and it's to cooking i'm turning it all the way down just so that it sits there because the rest of the flavors are coming together now right and, and it's amazing because that formed beautifully so i think um thinner use maybe a, a few less eggs correct so you don't have a duck thick correct omelet like that i get that all right, so because we want to also make sure that all the flavors stick to the egg and it doesn't go all over the pan, we're adding the cheese as the base so that the ah. rest of the ingredients stick to each other here. It and when you flip cream. it over, yeah. it doesn't just... Yeah. I love that. So, um, girl, how can we vote for you? Because I understand we can play a part in your success. Yes, How do you we can. do it? How do we so do it? All you do is you're going to SMS 37. 587. You're going to SMS Africa 27, and that's for me. That's to nominate Do Me, Chew Me as the top chef in Africa. And yes, then make please. sure that we bring it here to Cape Town, my guys. Let's oh, for do it. Sure. Let's bring it back to this kitchen, baby. <laughs> um, no, you've earned that, right? You have worked tirelessly on your brand, on your Thank food, you. um, on your, your story to tell. And seeing as we're all about beautiful stories this morning, I applaud you for that, sister. Absolutely amazing. And she's only just gotten started. That's the mind blowing fact. Well, we're going to wrap.
wrap up this incredible omelet and then we are going to invite uh, Chef Linda in to see if he can handle the heat in the kitchen as well. The culinary hotline bling! Ding, ding, ding! ding, ding. ding. Continues in a mo. Look at it. <gasps> Uh, Chumi, you've got my vote. That is all I'm saying. Now, Tropica Island of Treasure, it is back, and the celebrities are getting ready to challenge for the challenges, in fact, that lie ahead, and you have the chance to join them in Zanzibar. Now, the South Africa's charismatic software engineer turned TikTok dance sensation, Chad Jones, he welcomed us into his home to spill the tea on what he is looking forward to on Tropica Island of Treasure and what he's looking forward to in you, his future partner. Let's take a look. What's up guys, my name is Chad Jones. I'm a social media content creator and brand influencer. And what I'm known for on social media, I create trending dance videos with my mom and my dad. What I'm looking to gain personally is the experience of reality TV. And then secondly, just looking forward to making good relationships with all the other celebrity contestants and contestants in general. What I'm looking for in a partner to compete with as long as it's someone I can have fun with, and definitely there has to be a competitive side. I would say I'm pretty competitive. Why I would encourage other people to enter Tropical Island of Treasure, first of all, the money. Second of all, it's a trip away to an exotic island and just having fun while working towards the money. Join me on Tropical Island of Treasure and you could win your share of 1 million rand. All you have to do is upload your audition video to social media using the hashtag Tropica and the tag at MyTropica. I can see you on the island in Zanzibar. Oh, whoever is his partner, I feel like you also need to have a little bit of rhythm. And the cool thing is he's even on the bottle. So take a look at that. Chad is on the bottle. Now you stand a chance to join Chad Jones on Tropica's Island of Treasure. Simply submit an audition video online using that hashtag Tropica and at my Tropica for a chance to head to Zanzibar. Now you have until the 5th of May to submit your audition. And every week until the 4th of April, you stand a chance to win your share of 5,000 Rand by just entering. Plus, the seven lucky contestants will be granted 10,000 Rand courtesy of Deep Heat before even getting to Zanzibar. So you are in for a treat. And this is your chance to be in the running to win your share of 1 million Rand. Now that is smooth. There are T's and C's that can be found on our website, expressoshow.com. All right, so, wow, the, the magic has come together once again. Talk us through the final steps here of your process. Okay, so all I did here was make sure that I flipped it over because you need to make sure if an omelette is not completely folded over, it's not an omelette. But there then I go. decided, you know, let's stick That's to for the, the French. Tradition. That's for the French, yeah. <laughs> and I just finished it off with some acha, some slab chips on the side, and a drizzle of some barbecue sauce. Ooh, it looks spec. If you want to plug into this encyclopedic knowledge of not just our cuisine, but all cuisine, and how you can give any dish that African flavor, you can fire off your questions on any of our social media platforms or drop us a line right now. We have an opportunity, I think, to plug into one of the best in the business. And looking at this omelette, my word, you want to try this at home. Am I, am I allowed to have a taste? Can that I? is your taste, my friend. I've just cut up a piece for you. Oh, you can see, I'm... as I cut into it, those little insides oh, of it. There, you can just see all the little nuggets. You've got the polone. Got that crispy um, Russian as well in there. So as you bite into it, you get the crispiness from that. And you got that off You got that barbacoon. You got that um, You got that cheese. You got that You don't that understand. Egg. You don't understand. Oh, oh. oh my word. <laughs> this is absolutely delicious. No one else is having any of this. This is my <laughs> omelette, and you're going to make another three for me this morning. Absolutely beautiful. Chef Chumi doing what she does best, adding a little African flavor to meals that we absolutely love. If this is how we are starting our day, we are on a winning note. Get in my belly. <laughs> We're in Zanzibar for Tropica Island of Treasure. Are you... Did you just swim here from South Africa? 
there's an easier way to find fame and your share of a smooth million rand fortune. Simply upload your audition to social media, explain why you're a match for our celebs. Add the hashtag Tropica and tag at MyTropica and we can see you in Zanzibar. Buy a Tropica now and enter to be on the island. Did you just swim here from South Africa? Did you just swim here from South Africa? South Africa. Did you just... It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso on S3. We have Cassidy Nicholson joining us as we dive into the world of entertainment news. And we're going to kick it off with some local news. Do, first of all, do I have omelette on my face? No, yes. you don't, all but right. it smells so, incredible yeah, and I'm okay, very so hungry lying. right now. <laughs> oh, okay, we're going to start off with some local news. Ooh. South Africans on social media were raging after TV personality Shamiso Mosaka was removed from a flight from Durban to Johannesburg over her, and I quote, unruly behavior, the official said while she was on a phone call with her friend. Now, Shamiso went live on social media and put the incident in the spotlight about the alleged discrimination that led to her being thrown out. Now, in the clip wildly circulated on social media, police are seen trying to escort the presenter off the plane as she defends herself, arguing that she was not being disruptive and accusing the air hostess of being racist. I'm, I'm dying to, if someone else has got any more videos that we can reveal of the actual incident, I'd love to see that. I mean, it is what it is in this country. Unfortunately, um, racial threads are there everywhere. Racist mm. threads are everywhere. So we can understand that. At what point, though, does it become so hectic that you mm. get taken or thrown off a plane? When you hear a story like this, this sounds like something that should happen in Hollywood, yo. Gosh, I'm like, does no that happen? South yeah? Africa. Jeez. It's crazy. Well, I've had some friends that, you know, were air hostess, and it's a very stressful environment. So okay. they constantly, they get the fall down if their passengers don't have their seatbelts clipped, if their phones aren't off. So Because it's a safety thing. It's not it's a, a, safety... a customer service job. It's a safety it's a job. It's a safety element. And I suppose... I suppose if you are used to flying, each airline has its own policy and at the end of the day as a passenger, you have to respect that airline's way of doing things if you're on that flight. Possibly also because that is like the one thing where people are like super nervous. I mean, I remember I was with a bunch of friends and I'm like such a bubbly person. So I was like, yeah, this is the bomb. And someone's like, you can't just... And I was uh, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> but the thing is, it's it's such a... Everyone's, like, nervous when it comes to these yeah. types of things, you know? So I think there's, like, a decorum that you need to have when you're on, like, a plane as opposed to just being at a restaurant. Yeah. It's like, you may be fine, but you need to take into consideration that, you know, two rows down, there's someone who's, like, never been on a plane before. And so I think it's also just kind of making sure that those people feel seen and valued and you know, taken care of. I, I think if it got to this point, I would imagine everyone is justified in their yes, response, probably. Totally. Um, and that's often what makes the, these waters so murky, is because mm. there's so much baggage there as well. I mm. mean, um, we look at that, but hopefully there are no more repercussions and everyone involved can move on from that media storm as minor as it is. Now, let's focus on a, a media hurricane, if you will, <laughs> that is starting to swirl around our very own Tyler. She is set to release her debut self-titled album, 14 Tracks. And it's coming out this Friday. And it includes some massive artists as collaborators. So we're talking about the likes of Gunner, Travis Scott, Calvin Momo, all on the album. They've jumped on the opportunity to work with her. And as a newcomer, she seems to amaze all of us every time with what she and her hardworking team are capable of. I love the fact that she, she's the first to talk about her dancers. She's the first to talk about her choreographers, the first to talk about yeah. um, the, the backup singers. She is a collaborator. She herself was a backup singer and dancer at one point. Yeah. What do you make of what is going on in the world of Tyler right now? Because we knew it was going to be big. Yeah. But this is unprecedented for a South African artist. I think it's absolutely incredible. I mean, in the famous words of Tyler, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's, I think it's really cool. Not only is she young, like, doesn't have the, uh, the album out yet, but I mean, there's just, there's, it's so inspiring to see as a young South African. And I think when we cheer on for one another, there's so much more to it because it's like, in spite of mm. everything that's going on, you can still do that and you can still make your dreams come true. So I'm I'm just like, yes, queen, yes. Like, well, I'm just thinking of all the kids it. looking at her going, yes. wow, if we think this is mind-blowing, imagine if you've grown up in one reality with only one notion of what you could become. It's our version of you can do anything, you could be president type vibe, you know? Yeah. Go uh, for it, Tyler. You mm. could be president. Yes. You could don't be president. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Well, we now move over to some international news. Khloe Kardashian took to Instagram to honor her little brother, Rob Kardashian, with a sweet message for his 37th birthday. Aww. But this is where the news comes in. Her ex husband, Lamar Odom, who is clearly still keeping up with the Kardashians, <laughs> shared a loving comment <laughs> under Khloe's post. So let's take a look. Oh, he my family. Ah, yeah. What does it mean? What does it mean, Cassidy? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Let Cut it go. the cord. Oh, my well, God. Are we desperate to make this new? No, you know oh. what? It's like cheap. It's like, oh, he's clearly still keeping up. Oh, my I goodness. Say. I can't imagine, like, this is making news. Someone's comment on someone else's post on social media. It, no, it's wild. It's <laughs> wild. Well, it is the Kardashians. We've all got to keep up with the Kardashians, OK? <laughs> uh, maybe this one is a little more spicy, as spicy as the omelette we've just eaten. I've had the pleasure of working with Wayne Brady before. He is a genius. And, of course, a television host, a comedian, and an incredible uh, singer. And he announced to the public that he was pansexual in August of last year. So he recently opened up about the biggest misconception people have about pansexuals. And in an interview, he said that individuals think that you're an indecisive bisexual, and that is not the case, certainly not for him. Brady admitted to being attracted to the same sex, but was always pushed to the other direction due to his upbringing and the judgment he may face from the world. And the host added that he did feel shame and did not want people to find out despite having support in the LGBTQ plus community. So when he finally did decide to live his truth, he said he received an avalanche of support. Mm. It can so often go the other direction when you, when you show vulnerability. And we are here so sort of saying, be vulnerable, show your weakness so we can help you grow. But often when you do show that vulnerability to the world, the mm. trolls will come a calling. Oh, yeah, 100%. But I mean, at, at what cost, though? Because then you sit there and you sit in, in something that's not your truth. And I mean, people are going to ridicule you anyway, regardless if you're honest or not. So at least take back your power and be like, yep, yeah, 
cool, this is me. And the fact that I'm doing it on my own, you know, um, because I want to do it and the way that I want to do it, it's like you can say what you want, but it doesn't change my truth, you know? Completely. So I just think that there's like, it's a much of a muchness, but at least in this one, you have the control if you speak your truth. You no, know? completely. And again, it, it, it matters because there is someone like you going yeah. through what you've gone through exactly. that just needs an anchor or a hand up or someone to relate to. So and he can go to, to sleep you, with a clear conscience and just easy knowing that he's himself. And know? that's all that matters. 100%. That's all that matters. Well, listen, we, we, we hope by sharing our entertainment news with you, maybe a couple of numbers jumped out uh -huh. at you. Perhaps you are superstitious. How many yeah. times did we say Khloe Kardashian <laughs> and you're counting? <laughs> and you maybe want to use those numbers to play the lotto because when you win the lotto, the lotto plus one and lotto plus two, okay. There is an estimated jackpot of 16 million rand up for grabs today. I'll take it. I hope I'll you've take been counting it right and now. Seeing numbers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm thinking about how many times you said Kardashian <laughs> during that insert. Um, of course, you stand a chance to literally make it rain lots of cash, and you can do that. You can get all the cash and make it rain down on your head if you want to, but you've got to win the money first. So let's break it down. Lotto is offering an estimated 7 million rand. Lotto plus 1 million, and then uh, the Lotto plus 2 for 2 million rand today that's a lot of money it definitely is but if you want to stand the chance to win you need to pick your lucky numbers and play now you can buy your tickets today in store you can buy them on the national lottery.co.za website on the mobile app through your cell phone banking or by dialing star 120 star 7529 hash for ussd and we will, yes, keep all of those details, albeit not the winning numbers, on our social media uh, channels, all of our platforms. So you've literally got no excuse. Go Panda, Push Up, Play. Lotto, Lotto Plus One and Lotto Plus Two today are offering a 16 million rand total estimated jackpot. That's how you deal with hump. Day. Oh. Um, so we're going to be getting back in the kitchen after this. How exciting. We have Chef Linda ready for the culinary hotline. And then we also want to make sure we talk all things health, insulin resistance and diabetes. We're going to be tackling a little bit more about that. So don't go anywhere. It's my feel good breakfast show now, because she can literally do almost anything, um, we thought uh, going into our 8 o'clock news bulletin that we'd hand over to Cassidy, to the Constantia mom. So, guys, we are going to be rounding up everything that has just happened. Yeah, I say that. Just happened with Zoe Brown. Oh. Crazy. Thank you very much. Well, let's take a look at your national headlines as it's a few minutes before 8 o'clock. The MEC for Education in the Eastern Cape, Fundile Gade, has affirmed that they are making strides in eliminating pit toilets at schools in the province. He expressed confidence that by December, pit toilets would be eradicated entirely. 
Gade emphasised the urgency of this effort, citing incidents where learners had tragically lost their lives while using such facilities. He added that all indications were that pit toilets at schools in the Eastern Cape would, and I quote, be history by the end of the year. And the Fiscus cannot afford to finance the level of investment that will be required for a climate resilient infrastructure, says the Deputy Minister of Finance, David Masondo. He says there has been, there has to be a global as well as an African approach to dealing with climate change as its impact knows no boundaries. Masondo was speaking at a policy dialogue titled Southern Africa Towards Inclusive Economic Development. He added that investments in renewable energy sources, water conservation systems and sustainable urban developments were key to mitigating and adapting to climate impacts. We move to news beyond our own borders. Kenya's president, William Ruto, is hoping to provide affordable houses to low-income earners through a new levy. He has signed into law a controversial bill, paving the way for the government to continue collecting a housing levy of 1.5% of a worker's monthly pay. The levy is intended to pay for the construction of affordable housing for poorer Kenyans. However, it has sparked an outcry from the opposition and a large section of the population who feel burdened by a raft of new taxes. And UN agencies say northern Gaza could face a famine by May without a pause in the fighting and a surge in aid. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken says Gaza's two million people are experiencing severe levels of acute food insecurity. This was first time an entire population has been so classified, he said when questioned by reporters about conditions in the territory. Blinken called on Israel to prioritize providing for those in need. His comments were among his sternest yet in setting out the scale of the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. And for some light-hearted news, the actor must embody a movie star, be a cultural ambassador, a media diplomat, be good-looking with global recognition, and most importantly, be the epitome of Britishness. Of course, we are describing the next James Bond. Speculation now swirls once again as British actor Aaron Taylor-Johnson has reportedly been offered the iconic role. Taylor Johnson, only 33 years of age, has acknowledged the rumours with charm, seeing it as a compliment. He's favoured by the bookmakers competing with contenders such as Henry Cavill, James Norton, Tom Hardy, Idris Elba and Chris Evans for the 26th Bond film after No Time to Die. The casting decision not only stirs immeasurable excitement but also reflects the ongoing allure of the legendary 007 character in cinema. Well, that's where I leave those headlines. Let's take a final look at your sport. Thank you so much. So let's kick it off with some great news for one young football player coming out of the Manchester United camp. Rising star Kobe Mainu has received his maiden call up to the England squad. That's for their upcoming friendlies against Brazil and Belgium. What a test for the 18 year old midfielder who's been a standout performer for United this season. Really has made his mark. So much so that he's earned recognition with the top gun. So Gareth Southgate's admiration for Mainu is clearly evident. The youngster now has the opportunity to showcase his talents and compete for a spot in England's squad for Euro 2024. And I think with the form that he's in at the moment, he has taken a massive step towards that. Now let's get the tail of the tape from the rugby that's just wrapped up. And Bundy Aki stands out as the sole nominee from Ireland's back-to-back -back Six Nations Championship winning squad for the tournament's Player of the Year accolade. The New Zealand-born player displayed remarkable prowess throughout, recording an impressive 144 metres in contact. That is staggering. That's the highest, in fact, among all the players in the championship by quite a margin. Then England's Ben Earl joins Aki with uh, Scotland's Duan van der Merwe and Italy's Tommaso Mononcello as the nominees. Really strong and great to see some fresh faces in there as well. 
Now let's turn to some very competitive tennis this year. Davis Cup champions Italy, they've been drawn into Group A alongside some formidable opponents in the form of Belgium, Brazil and the Netherlands. That's for the finals group stage in September. So hosted in Bologna, Italy will obviously enjoy home advantage as they strive to defend their title, one through the remarkable performance of Yannick Sinner, who's having the year of his life. Then in Group B, last year's runners-up, Australia will contend in Valencia against the Czech Republic, France and Spain. And the top two teams from four groups will then advance to the final eight knockout phase in Malaga in November. Then we round off with uh, some sad news uh, for some athletes heading towards the Olympic. The International Olympic Committee, or IOC, has announced that athletes from Russia and Belarus will not participate in the parade of athletes at the opening ceremony of Paris 2024 Olympics in July, just around the corner now. So the decision comes obviously in response to Russia's invasion of the Ukraine, which began in 2022. Athletes from these two countries who qualify for the Games will now have to compete as independents without their national flag or the anthem which for the athletes really does matter instead they will be competing under a specially created flag and an anthem without any lyrics the opening ceremony which will take place on the river Sien, iconic as it is will see teams floating past an estimated 300,000 spectators so bittersweet for some but that's where we leave our sporting headlines for today let's get you to work safely now and take a look at the roads Thank you, Graham. Let's start off with traffic in Boxburg, Johannesburg. There's been a multi-vehicle accident. It's on the ramp towards the N12 westbound after Rondebolt Road. That left lane is affected. Expect delays. In Westville, KZN, there's a stationary vehicle on the N3 eastbound. It's before the ramp towards Pavilion Interchange at St. James Avenue. That right lane is closed. Please drive carefully. And in Cape Town, there's some slow-moving traffic on the N1 inbound on the FW de Clark Boulevard towards the elevated freeway. Please keep a safe following distance and drive carefully. That's your traffic. Let's take a final look at your weather. And the South African Weather Service has issued a yellow level 2 warning for severe thunderstorms, bringing potential heavy downpours, hail, damaging winds and excessive lightning. This may result in localised flooding, service disruptions due to power surges and life-threatening situations across the eastern parts of the northwest, Free State Gauteng and the high felt of Mpumalanga. Additionally, extremely high fire danger conditions are expected for the Kamisberg local municipality area and central northern Cape. Moreover, a heat wave with persistently high temperatures is expected in the northwest, Free State and the central eastern parts of northern Cape until tomorrow, extending until Friday in the northeastern interior of the eastern Cape. Well, that's your weather update. Let's take a final look at your sunrise view. Megan from Johannesburg shared our view and look at that. Looks like you're at a beautiful holiday resort, Megan. Well, thank you for that sunrise view. And if you would love to share yours with us, our number is 063-408-8863. Here's a final look at your temperatures. find yourself but hopefully you find yourself right in your lounge right now or better yet your kitchen because we're going to have a little bit of fun as the culinary hotline bling ding 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 continues and chef linda he was given a tough act to follow after that omelet but he's going to smash it in just a moment you can fire off your questions on our social media platforms then we're going to delve into a vitally important conversation around insulin resistance and what you can do to prevent the onset of diabetes a vital conversation we'll plug you in just now
It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to another installment of the Culinary Hotland Bling. Ting, ting, ting! I love this face. We are joined by <laughs> Chef Linda, who's going to be showing us how to prepare his version of a gourmet omelette. Please join the discussion, share your tips, any questions that you have. We have got a genius in the house with us this morning. Fire them up on our social media platforms. Oh, buddy, I love your vibe. I love your energy. Yeah. And I love your food. <laughs> um, Thank you so much. So, look, I've got to say, Chumi set the, the, the bar quite the high. Yeah. High. Okay, so <laughs> that omelette was great. So we've yeah. taken our omelette challenge to a whole nother level. You're yes. going to whip something up that's got that Linda flavor. Yes. Um, first of all, I've got to ask you, though, what is that Linda flavor? What would you say typifies your kind of cooking because you've also been nominated for chef of the year on this continent yes. at the Emerge Awards. So congratulations. Buddy. That deserves a massive <laughs> round of applause. Um, which is, but what, what's gotten you there? What is your style? I feel um, blessed. I feel great. I feel it was unexpected and it is such a, a, a very... It's big. It's big, big to be no nominated with big guns like Chef Dumi, Chef Zolanene. It's awesome. And also what defines my culinary cuisine flavor. I love... I've worked for Italian restaurant for quite the longest time ah, when I was young. So I that's see. where I was inspired with Italian flavors. So today I'm making an Italian omelette. It's actually Woo! an open omelette similar to frittata, okay. but you don't fold it. All it's, right. You just mix everything together. I love I it, I will man. use a lot of green, or you can call it a green omelette. You know, you have your green smoothie. Exactly. Where you use your spinach, your cucumber, your apples, da 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 And da. you know green means healthy because yes, we get yes. so much Lots nutrients, nutrients from that. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm going to help you in whatever way I can. Yes. The stage is yours. Where do we Let's begin? Let's start. Okay. First things first, can you please help me chop my onion? I can. With like oh, you checked. Half. You threw me under the bus straight away. You were like, <laughs> Don't okay. Don't cut your fingers, eh? <laughs> I hope you, you, you need your, your chef skills. Yeah, <laughs> listen, chef I've, skills. I, I've been so lucky to work alongside the likes of, of you, of Chumi, yes. Chef Clem, for, for the longest time. So I have picked up a little trick, tip or trick Those or two. Those are amazing chefs from South oh, Africa. Man. So go. while you're peeling your onion and chopping it, I'm going to roughly chop my garlic for flavor and onion as well. As I've told you that we're doing an Italian green um, omelette. So we're gonna use a lot of greens, our baby spinach, our coriander, our spring oh onion, and then for protein, we're gonna use chicken. And then oh. we're gonna make a, a jus or rather a sauce on the side, white sauce, um, to complement or to accompany our omelette. Okay, okay, I'm going quite finely chopped here, huh? Cool. So our pen is hot there. Make sure that you don't bend your elbow. <laughs> <laughs> I so, can feel the heat. Um, yes. So here I have my knob of butter. Okay. Um, knob of butter for flavor. Unsalted butter, right? Okay, two is fine. Because already we're going to put our salt and pepper and we're going to use cheese, which is white, uh, two white cheese, feta and um, Ooh, and already got a lot of salt yes, content. Yes, it's salty. Hey. Yes. So... Just a drizzle of olive oil. Okay, can you please crack four eggs for me in the pan? I can, with pleasure. And the olive oil obviously allows that butter to burn at a slightly higher yes. smoking point. Okay, cool. Because butter can burn. Yes. Okay, while you're cracking your eggs there, I'm going to add finely chopped onion in my pan. And then garlic. Can I have my garlic? Four Sorry, eggs, okay. hey? I, I spoke my, my mistake into existence. <laughs> and then garlic Knock for it flavor. One of you guys, there we go. Nice. And then, I'm gonna give this a stir. Um, and then just a little bit of ginger. Ooh. A little bit of ginger here. That's you know, quite interesting. Flavor. We're creating flavors here. Layers of flavor. Yes, I love you know, that. Gordon Ramsay, when he says mirepoix, like your finely chopped celery, onion, carrot, that's like your base for every stew sauce or like even your omelette. So, what I'm doing here is my mirepoix. Mirepoix, I love that. <laughs> yes, and, and it's French. We do lean a lot on the traditions of French cooking because it, it seems to me it's one was, was one of the first to formalize yes. the kind of cuisine culture. Yes. So, I know a lot of chefs have to go through that gateway. Can I um, whisk. whisk these guys? Yes, and then pinch of salt while you're whisking and pinch of pepper and then add cream, just, just a dash of cream and milk. So yeah. here I just don't want to bend my onion and ginger and garlic because I'm, we're doing a white omelette. Okay. So everything has to remain white. So our heat is on low. So 
it's it, we're actually sweating sweating you don't want burnt or brown oh, sure. or caramelized onion you call it sweating but when you saute you that's where you want to you, you're doing your brown juice your oxtail but that's where you want to caramel your onions kind of brown. maximize the yes. flavor and then out while of. you're doing that i'm gonna season my chicken breast with pinch of salt and pepper um how does that look Good. Perfect. Maybe add one more egg because this has to be a main egg, like muscle. You see, I'm going to gym now. I have a lot of muscle. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, we, we listed it earlier. The, the three key nutrients. The three yes. Key, protein, protein, and protein. Yes. So I'm <laughs> gonna. This is. We need strips from this chicken so that it cooks quickly. Okay. Then add it here. Because using the breast, you don't want it to dry out. Yes. You can also maybe you bought like a chicken, a whole cooked roasted chicken, and then it's left from yesterday night. Shred it and then Ooh, use that as clever. well in your omelet. I'll often so, do that even when making a curry or something like that because you can get all the the most flavorful parts of that chicken with the yes, flavor developed already. Exactly. Great. Okay. So while this is cooking here and this pan, we're gonna develop our white sauce now. Okay. Then we're gonna preserve it on the side with our omelet. So butter again, always butter. Butter, butter, Can butter. You smell the aroma here. Mm. Amazing. Mm. I love it. Love it. It's okay. Olive across. oil. Just a little yeah. bit of olive oil. Nice. And you can see the effect it has on that smoking cream. point. Cream. Cream. Yeah. Gotcha. It's fine. More flavor here. Can you add cream? There we go. Cream. If it was wine, there was going to be a lot of fire. And then yeah, you call exactly. it flambe. Flambe. We don't, we, we, <laughs> we don't mind the drama yes. in our kitchen, can I have my friend. Milk? And we have some milk. Yes. There we go, chef. Just a dash of milk. And then we're going to leave this to simmer until it reaches a smooth consistency. Okay, so it's yeah. going to thicken Not too naturally. runny, not too thick. Pinch of salt, pinch of pepper, and then can have a lemon zest. There's your zester there. There we go. And there's a lemon there. Mm -hmm. Can you come yeah. zest here for me? I can do it. <laughs> I like this. Little... Perfect. Are you joining? chef. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You see, don't okay. laugh. All of the all of the in-house foodies are like, yeah, buddy. Um, how much okay, are we uh, going chicken. for? Yeah, just uh, more. Oh, that enough. smells because also in. you know lemon and, and cream for are gonna sure. separate so you don't want to put it uh, because of the acid in the yes and then give this a stir oh i wish you could smell what is coming across yes um so of course we have an opportunity to vote for you as well as the chef of the year top so have, africa chef. Um, top african <laughs> chef at <laughs> the Image emerge awards, awards which is <laughs> massive dude yes. um so we're going to keep those voting um details up oh that smells amazing the aroma is all over the room look at that so that's <laughs> the dynamic if you want to vote for this incredible man i know we, we're kind of splitting your heart here having to choose between two we had Chef Linda. Um, give them both a vote. Give them yeah. both a vote. They must I be fair. It. I don't know, but the top chef must win. <laughs> but the, we both <laughs> favorites for, for our people, me and Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I this think looks amazing. I think you're just being humble. Um, yeah. <laughs> one has to be. That so, looks, smells as I've told incredible. You, yeah, 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 yeah. The aroma is amazing. As I've told you when we started that we, our omelette is green omelet you know okay. remember you have your green smoothie your green salad for sure See, this is a green smoothie so we're going to use a lot of greens and we know that greens contain a lot of nutrients that are good for your immune system your eyes everything for and sure especially if you're a gym fanatic oh my gosh yeah you cherry need it. on top of the yeah you got to put back in the protein yes, yes but the nutrients as well so we're gonna put the finishing touches on this incredible recipe while you guys do a little health deeper dive right now as we tackle insulin resistance and diabetes prevention and the management thereof. Zanella is going to be that plug-in right now. She's got a panel of experts to guide us through it. When we return, Zoe gets a taste. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're on your Feel Good Breakfast show, and you know that we are all about having chats around our health because your health is your wealth, my friend. And this is why today we are having an important conversation around what we call metabolic syndrome. It is something that honestly and truly not a lot of people know about. And did you know that it makes you five times more likely to develop what we call diabetes? And this for me is honestly just one of those things where I'm like, yeah, 
it is time we have a conversation about it. So this is why we've got CEO of the Medical Nutritional Institute, Marianne Duplessis, as well as the m &I researcher, Ashley Smith. Hello, ladies. How are you? Good, thank, thank you. That's good. Thank you for making time for us. I want to come to you first and foremost, Ms. CEO, because, of course, when we talk about metabolic syndrome, not a lot of people know about it. So can you please just expand on it and also let us know what are the risks associated with it? Insulin resistance is a primary role player in the metabolic syndrome, and it forms part of two of the components of the metabolic syndrome, mm -hmm. namely your central obesity, so that's weight around your waist, yeah. and then also abnormal or unregulated blood glucose levels. Insulin resistance is also a progressive disease, and mm -hmm. that means it worsens over time. So if you don't look after yourself, it will lead to type 2 diabetes. So early intervention is absolutely essential. So it's good to look out for early signs of insulin resistance and a very helpful indicator is your waist circumference. Yeah. For every centimeter, over 80 centimeters for women and 94 centimeters for men, increase your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Sure. So it's not about those kilograms, but about centimeters. Mm. And the reality is it's one out of three South Africans or pre-diabetic. So that's why you have to take this risk very personally. Yes. And you see, this is why I'm like, we need to actually get to know about this because it affects so many people. Yeah. But yeah. Ashley, that's why I want to come to you. When we talk about this, someone possibly having it and not even knowing about it, how can we manage it? And what are our treatment options? So at m and I, we focus on the underlying cause of a condition. Mm. Abnormal glucose, insulin resistance, and excess body fat all contribute to the development of type 2 diabetes. Yes. Certain eating styles and supplementations can help to optimize your blood sugar and your insulin level, and thereby prevent or manage diabetes and also just support your body for sustainable weight loss. What I love about what you guys also do is the fact that you are committed to making South Africans' lives a little bit easier when it comes to looking after their health. So what are some of the solutions that MNI has for this as a whole? MNI's insulin-friendly CAPE meal plan has been specifically formulated to better your weight loss results and your glucose control. CAPE is an acronym and it stands for Carbohydrate Adjusted Protein Enriched. And the CAPE meal plan is available for free on our website at mnilifestyle.co.za. And then you need to support your body further than this. And Tagalin by MNI has been scientifically formulated to fight insulin resistance. The good news is, is that insulin resistance is reversible and it responds very well to treatment with Antagalin. Blood sugar control is obviously also very important yeah. when you're dealing with insulin resistance, pre-diabetes and diabetes. And so what Antagalin does is it focuses on the input, output and processing of sugars in the body in order to optimize your glucose metabolism. Observational studies done over a 26 week period have shown that you can actually double your weight loss results if you use Antaglin in combination with the Cape Meal Plan. Yeah. Study participants also lost an average of 16.26 centimeters around their waist. And at the end of the day, losing centimeters around your waist is even more important than your weight on the scale. Yeah. With every centimeter that you lose, you reduce your risk of developing diabetes. Mm. We must understand that fighting insulin resistance early can help us prevent future health complications. And for this, and Tagalin is a credible and safe option and it's backed by years of research and experience. Sure, Ashley, you had me at doubling my weight loss, hey? Because, <laughs> I mean, yes, for, you know, the health as well, but everything else too. But I want to ask you, please, Marianne, because, of course, uh, when it comes to people and now just, you know, living their lives and possibly not knowing that they might be living with this, what are some of the signs that, hey, you need to go and see someone who's a professional. Yeah, You know what, first of all, go to our website, mm. read up about it, empower yourself with information. That's always the first step. Yes. Then we have a lot of assessments available free of charge on our website. Mm -hmm. That really gives you indication on where your problem might be. And you can even take that results to your doctor for further advice. So we always say, empower yourself and then take it from there. I love that. Thank you so much, ladies, and thank you for empowering us to be able to do exactly that. You see, it is all about the power, and it is in your hands, because at the end of the day, your body is your temple, and you need to make sure that you've got enough love for it to be able to look after it the way that it deserves. You're still on your feel-good breakfast show.
All right, Chef Linda is whipping up an Italian green omelette. Our white mm. sauce has had some blue cheese mm. added to it. Sm uh, smells, tastes Amazing. spectacular. We've got the right viscosity, if you will, and we're putting the final touches here. Yes. Um, so from filling our bellies with food that looks absolutely amazing to filling our homes with some exquisite new homeware trends. St. Ledger and Viney are here to take us through their incredible new season collection. And then uh, Cassidy and I are going to have a little bit of fun playing Guess the desserts. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, but this has come together spectacularly well. After the break, Zoe will get her taste. Yeah. <laughs> It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. It is your feel-good breakfast show. It's Espresso on S3. And finally, it's my turn to be allowed <laughs> in the kitchen. Although I didn't... I wasn't part of any of the cooking. <laughs> well, I the aroma would... invited you. It definitely did. She was getting hangry. Okay, Aww. I think the rest of the studio team was like, get in there and eat, Zoe. Please eat it. Um, so do you want to explain to us, Zoe, what's, what this omelette is so all about? So our green omelette, uh, because I use a lot of greens, basil, baby spinach, spring onion, and then for Ooh. protein, it's chicken. Well cooked. No salmonella. Ah, <laughs> thank you, so, Linda. Because, remember, at, when it started, I said I worked a lot when I was young at Italian restaurants. So we're going to serve this um, omelette similar to frittata, a pizza style way. Ooh. So we're going to cut it into V. Like, you can serve this as a whole. Um, like, put Are the whole pan. Are you happy with the texture? Oh. Yes, I'm happy. Did like, you, you can put the whole pan on the table. Oh. Breakfast table. So like a pizza style. You can switch off the stuff for me. And then like you take your V-shape slice. Oh, um, hello. You put it here. See how amazing is that? It's exquisite. I like that you can make one big because one and then everybody at the table can exactly. have Exactly. Remember we're talking gourmet. When we're talking gourmet, we're talking exquisite. We're talking five-star food. Mm. You know, yes. something that you don't find anywhere. Something unique, something different. So just a little bit of avo. So then... does it frustrate you to see someone just 
skin and ever so effortlessly oh. and so beautifully. <laughs> I mean, I go in with the skin and then you scoop, scoop it out. Scoop it out. Chop plating it out. techniques are also important. <laughs> plating techniques. And then we're going to have our sauce. Because you do eat with the Just to eye. finish yeah. it off because this is a five-star cuisine omelette that you won't find it anywhere. Sure, you know. buddy. Oh, I... that looks good, chef. Okay, and so we... then to give that chili for people that love chili things this is tobacco or ketchup with a touch of um chili just do this on top. i love that and then have coriander as the garnish oh. on top you know oh just to ruin the dish <laughs> no i'm sorry man i i have a thing i have like an anti-coriander okay. campaign you can have your uh, slice of shea butter Seed loaf or it's, whatever. It's or, just or just a sign, Chef, plate. that that's all mine. Okay, so here's <laughs> the deal. Okay, so the, the omelette that Chef Chumi made for me earlier was probably the best omelette I've ever tasted. Okay, mm. so for Chef Linda to win this omelette challenge, this is going to have to be better than the best omelette you've ever tasted. Mm. Okay. I'm um, getting I'll a taste as well. I'll, I'll hand you a fork. Ooh. You can get your own little slice How there. much <laughs> bread do you want so that I can <laughs> do the winner? <laughs> 10,000. <000. laughs> oh. I need to get the sauce. I need to get some of that the avocado. Ever. I need to get the some spice. Some Tabasco. Yes. I need to get a little bit of the sauce from the sauce. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the sauce from the sauce. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Chef, I will admit, it's the first time I'm eating chicken and egg together. I have a thing against it. Me too, yeah. funny enough. It feels like mother and child, but this is good. Does <laughs> <laughs> not remind me of that. Yeah. You're so funny. Um, wow. That's Even if I've finished the mouthful, the flavors still keep yeah. rolling Keeps on over coming. The yeah. Thank uh, you the so only much. way I know how to choose a winner is Chef Chumi needs to also come make me one, and then <laughs> Fair I'll game. be able to Fair vote. game. For the, the purposes of parity, we need that, okay? Oh, oh I love it. Oh, man, absolutely delicious. Chef Linda, you are a superstar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is delicious. Oh, I want another one. I want another one. <laughs> um, oh, so Let ahead, take away. <laughs> exactly. I brought my bucky. Um, ahead of celebrations and entertaining, we love to liven up our homes for our guests. And as a new season comes in, we want to plug into that. And the best and easiest way to do that is knowing the interior design trends that are coming for the season and finding your match. And Harmony recently joined St. Ledger and Viney at their launch of their brand new collections for 2024 and saw how incredible design can effortlessly create an extraordinary living space. Take a look at this. I'm going in for more. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. We're here at the beautiful St. Leisure and Viney launch event to unveil the magic behind their 2024 fabric and wallpaper collection. Let's go have a look. My name is David Ralphs. And um, I have the pleasure of supplying the most beautiful product to an incredible creative clientele and really the great privilege of leading a wonderful and growing St. Ledger and Viney team. I think that the use of fabrics is always one of the most important things in interior design. The ability to see something beautiful, to engage with it, to touch it is very tactile. So I think that's what you get from today's event is that you get to immerse yourself and almost imagine where you'd use all these amazing fabrics. I'm seeing a lot of natural designs coming through, which I'm excited about. A lot of organic textures, just bringing nature indoors, which I think is an amazing change to what we've seen before with a lot of very like modern contemporary design. You had a beautiful collection here. What is the inspiration behind your collection? 2024 is about uh, travel. Uh, it's about natural fabrics. We have also something very colorful uh, with uh, strong colors that we believe are coming back. Uh, something kind of arty pop culture um, mood. Uh, we also have like a, a Los Angeles collection, very relaxed vibe with palm trees. Something that we we bring the clients to holidays with us uh, into a very chill vibe. Today I walk away with uh, LETs being a fan favorite for me. The use of color, very bold. It was quite expressive in terms of the textures and the color. 
Well, we're seeing a big trend at the moment in terms of um, the colours uh, for 2024, which are things like mustards and browns and sludgy greens. So there was a lot of that. Um, so I'm, I'm intending to use a lot of that uh, in, my, in my designs. And also the patterns. I love pattern. So I will be using a lot of those patterns that I've seen today with my clients in the designs. You presented such a phenomenal collection. Can you tell me what was the artistic inspiration behind your collection? This year, every year is different, but this year the inspiration was uh, this incredible lady from the 20s in Portugal that was uh, ahead of our time. Her name was v Viva, right? Viva, correct. Viva. Yes. I I'm going to go read more about it. <laughs> so you will see a lot of art deco, contemporary and ethnic designs. The art deco is it's pretty much the focus of this collection. So the trends that I saw here today is that the old is coming back definitely, but it's coming back in a very, very bold sense. It's coming back very aesthetically, very ethnically. I mean, you can literally become your own individual while designing with all of these different fabrics that we have here. Why did you choose to present your collection here at the St. Ledger and Viney 2024 launch event? St. Ledger and Viney is our uh, historical uh, distributor here in South Africa. They know how to make the events, they know how to welcome the guests, and we are super proud to have such a, a distributor here in South Africa representing so well the Elitist collections. You know, it's clear that St. Leisure and Viney are happy to have you here. I could see the smiles all over their faces when you were presenting. Why did you feel like they were a match made in heaven for you? Yeah, I think we're a good addition to uh, the other brands that they already have here in South Africa in all of the showrooms. Just such a big portfolio from outdoor to indoor collections of fabrics. So pretty happy with, to be partnered. And there you have it a refined array of local and international new collections that can elevate your home and lifestyle. If you're like me, a lover of artistry and the quality of interior design, then stay tuned to find out how you could win a set of Elita scatter cushions. Hey, I want one. Oh, I'm glad Harmony looked the part. Yo, put that on your vision board. There are some truly exquisite collections this year. And you, as an added bonus, stand a chance to win a set of two LTs scatters worth 5,000 Rand. How do you do it? You've got to reply to our competition post on any one of our platforms, Facebook, X, or Instagram, and tell us this. What clever decorating tip do you have to make your space pop you've maybe have gotten a couple of hints there don't forget to hashtag slv home and don't forget that that competition closes midday on friday the 22nd of march i have a feeling we're going to get a lot of entries for this one so make yours really good but you can find all the t's and c's on our website expressoshow.com the whole day has felt like a Friday, and Chef Linda, Chef Chumi, you guys really came through with the most delicious omelets. I love what you've created. We're just going to finish this one off with a little bit mm. more sauce. And then, yes, I've polished my plate. I've gone in for seconds. They're still left for thirds, so we are going to take a <laughs> quick break. When we get back, we have had an incredible performance so far from Jubilee as well as Yoaf, and we've got another one waiting for you, so don't go anywhere.
Oh, welcome back. Uh, this morning we've had the pleasure of hosting both Chef Tumi and Chef Linda on this week's edition of the Culinary Hotline. Bling! Ding, ding, ding! There's always one last ding left in us. And we put them to the test with a mystery box gourmet omelette challenge. They've both done miraculously well. Now it's time for us to taste and decide who will be the winner of our mystery box gourmet omelette challenge, which is mm. almost impossible because I said... Mine was the, the best omelette I think I've ever tasted. Mm. Um, Chef Linda delivered yet another superstar omelette that was the mm. best that Zoe's ever yeah. tasted. So I think we're going to call it a tie, okay, <laughs> until one of you scoops the best African chef award at Emerge. <laughs> then you that can take good. the golden monkey with yeah. you <laughs> home with you and you're a winner. But we're going to have a little good. bit of fun uh, to round things off because we've, we've really just added other layers of flavor, of excitement, innovation. So now you two are going to have a little dessert showdown. Okay. okay. All right, so you have got carte blanche to use your very abundant creative juices to create something special. How are you feeling about that? Look, they, this is what I love. I love being put on the spot because I come up with crazy things right there when I'm on the spot. Don't I give me it. time to think about it. Just That's throw me in the deep end. That's to the ancestral <laughs> line of all the chefs you know. in your family and you do it. Okay, um, so how long are we gonna give them? Two minutes. Okay, two minutes. Get out the we way can do it. Then. All right, I'm going to start your clock. <laughs> In three, two, one. Start cooking, baby. Start <laughs> cooking. Um, okay, Chef Linda, talk us through what you're going to be creating here. I'm making something similar to. Um, Don't slow down. Don't slow down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll start by cracking my eggs um, into a bowl. Two eggs. Uh, I love, I see marshmallows here. Mm. I grew up eating a lot of them. Yeah. Okay, then I'm gonna give this a whisk. Um, and then I'm gonna add my sugar. Um, not See, too much. I think Choose has a an unfair advantage because he's kind of used to <laughs> being put on the spot to cook. That's been a big part of your culinary journey. What yeah. what are you making for us? Um, I'm I'm going to make a what's that? What's that? Uh, you know that that. Uh, I can't remember what is a rocky road, okay. but a, a, a pancake style. Ooh. Pancake style rocky road. Let's see how that goes. Ha! Got how am I going to do this? <laughs> I love that laugh of confidence. <laughs> um, it's, it's amazing. But you can do quite a lot in a little bit of time. Um, and sometimes it just kind of relies on you letting go. Just doing it, just following your instincts, your guts. And hoping for the best. You know the one thing I love about food is that, I keep talking about putting myself on the spot, the one thing about food is that it allows you to get creative. Get for creative, sure. get out of your comfort zone, try something, if it works, great. If it doesn't, then you know for next time. Yeah, nobody you know? has to know about it. It's not like you're cooking on live yeah. TV in front of millions of people, you know? Um... And you know that, that's how a lot of recipes were created. A lot of things were created when people were trying something. and that like, mm, By mistake? This could mm. actually work. Because so, there are some food pairings that you're like, never in on a million years. Yeah. Feta cheese and anchovies and watermelon. What are you talking about? Then put them together, <laughs> boom. Look at that. And now we've got pizzas and stuff that have all of that combination in one. So I'm just trying to spread it around because I'm thinking to make a, a couple of mini ones. Okay, Let's well, your, the clock is ticking, eh? So maybe it's just <laughs> one mini one. I, I'm not going to be too one. judgmental. But let's see what we can get from here. All right, so we're going to stop the clock right now. I'm not going to force you to, to stop because this deliciousness is looking absolutely amazing. And then we will decide on our dessert challenge winner in just a moment. Um, it's once again going to be an agonizing choice. But hey, someone's got to do it, man. Someone's I'll do it. Do I'll, it. I'll put myself through it. <laughs> How am I going to do this? I need those babies. Oh, well, listen, if you are hungry, yes, this is the show. And I would suggest you don't play along because in honor of Clover's brand new vanilla custard, we are playing a delicious game called Guess the Dessert. Graham, you're going to come and join myself and Cassidy as we get ready <laughs> for this game. Now, how it's going to work is uh -huh. I'm going to show you, you know, a series of some desserts okay. that are famously served with custard and you need to tell me what it is. So while we play, we also get to snack on some Thank delicious you. clover. Thank custard. you. I didn't want to be presumptuous and just eat. No, no, the, you the get to do that. that. So are you ready? Should I should we take a look at dessert number wow. one? Mm. And here 
Okay. What the guesses are. So we're going to put it on board for you. Okay. Oh, okay. Whoa. Um, so, ah. so, so. I don't know how your eyes are, but I don't know what that that's is. That's kind of what, what life looks like to me most of the time. Colors anyway. and shapes. Yeah, I yeah, know. If I'm, you don't I'm wear your contact close. lenses, that is life for you. But mm -hmm. can you guess ah. out of that blurry vision? The clue I have is it's typically dessert. Malva pudding. Served with custard. I'm going to go with Malva pudding. What do you think, Cassidy? Malva pudding. Malva pudding. Is it Malva pudding? Ladies and gentlemen. Well done. You see. Well done. There, there's you you did caramel... all the work for heavy lifting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, it's that caramel colour. Mm. Kind of shone through there. Nice. I, I mean, I you desserts. think custard, you think Malva pudding. Yeah. Yeah, Let's get on to our second dessert. Okay, and we have a spoon for good luck. Now, what jelly. do you think this is? Oh, it's got to be, hey? It's jelly. Raspberry jelly. Raspberry jelly. Is that the answer? Let's take a look. Yes, it is. I know there's strawberries there, but I'm prom I'll promise berry. you it's raspberry. Look, it's just It's <laughs> okay. Jelly. Yeah. Both. Two points Two in the points bag. Each. Nice. Cool. Let's take a look at the bubble. next one. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. It's Any almost guesses? Yeah. Trifle. Oh, you are so clever. Uh, listen. I'm not, oh. not going to jump on that because I didn't get that. I'm a trifle girly. That's trifle. It's got uh, Are you two cheating? It's supposed to be a competition. <laughs> <laughs> it's Cassidy versus Graham. Not Cassidy let's and see, Graham. Let's, let's take a look. Oh, uh, it is a And that's well, a pretty back. trifle. That is take, it better be a They're boozy trifle. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It is a pretty trifle. Okay. Three place let's move two. over okay. to wow, the on. next one. I hope this one is a tough one. What do you think? We're it's, seeing some it's yellow, a, a orange rubber, color. Rubber duck. It's a rubber duck some in the box. Darkness no, in the not. background. It looks like my cat. Wow. Um, this is how I look at the TV normally, by the way. Yeah, I know. It's, just, uh, it's oh. amazing how your eyesight like, you know, eye improves when you squint like that. Can we, can we have that up one last time? Let's take a look. Let's help them out. Please. Okay. A dessert that would typically be served with clover custard. G Man? Oh, chocolate pudding. I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm pudding. going for. Chocolate pudding with? Oh. Custard? Cust no, I'm... <laughs> nah. What type of chocolate pudding? Just normal Like a volcano pudding? chocolate... Uh, like a lava cake. Yeah, like a lava is cake. Is that your final answer? Are you locking it in? What is the orange thing? It's the custard, man. Surely. Is it? The, okay. Is yeah. It? Sure, okay, let's see. Let's see. Oh, I feel like... Look, we, I hope we, you get this. Canned can fruit. fruit. The canned oh, fruit. The canned fruit. That's a dirty, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dirty. You're trying to say my, my boy loves... Canned fruit dessert. Oh. It's like his favorite thing in the world. I let you down, boy. I'm sorry. Oh, man. it's okay. It was known. a blurred out photo. It was right. supposed to be tough. Okay, take a guess. We've got one more. You can definitely see it's a apple pie. pie. Apple crumble. Apple crumble. Yeah. Okay. Apple pie. Apple, 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 apple crumble. Let's yeah. take a look. Got to be. Apple yes. crumble. Jeez, look at the crumble hey, on that. Hey, yo. Baby. I eat the crumble nice. on its ace. Ooh. Oh, completely. <laughs> oh, do we have the any dough, more? Apple. Okay, we've got one more. One, one more. last okay. one. What do you think that is? It looks like a lasagna, but you wouldn't eat. Clover lasagna custard with, with lasagna. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Take a guess. You've had apple crumble, you've had the malfa pudding, we've had the trifle. Uh, I feel like the, the one thing we haven't had is milk tart, but I don't know if you have milk tart with custard very often. No, um, also it wouldn't be served in that ceramic dish, would it? Uh, milk tart's generally round. <laughs> yeah. Not I'm just rectangle. running out of South African 2024, yeah. it can be a square two or a Okay, triangle. we won't box in the milk tart, but <laughs> Oh, I have it? no idea. Yeah. I have absolutely no idea. Let's take a look. Put us out reveal, of our misery. Reveal. Bread and, Bread and, and butter, butter pudding. pudding. Hey. Oh, that Ew. is like the most South African thing that ever South African. Come Aww. on. Well, you oh, two man. enjoy your clover custard. This is perfect. And for you, this is your sign to go <sighs> buy or make mm. that dessert that you've been craving and smother it in as much clover custard as you want. And we'd love to also hear from you. What is your favorite dessert to eat with custard? You can connect with us online and let us know. Elevate your custard game with the all-new vanilla-flavoured Clover Custard. So creamy and smooth, it makes all the other desserts a little jelly. Oh, well, we are taking a quick break. Only a few minutes left on your Feel Good Breakfast show. If you took Friday off, it feels like a Friday today. Because it it's does. a fake Friday. Officially. It is. Ahead it's of a long weekend. But yes, we have one more performance coming your way. We have a Jubilee as well as Yoav ready to give us two final performances before we end off this day.
Oh, I turned my back for a second, just like you at home, and they have created masterpieces. Chef Chumi and Chef Linda were given a very short time to challenge to whip up a dessert, and they have both done something spectacular. It's crazy. I don't know how you do this. Okay, so talk me through your dessert before okay. I have a taste. We've got a Rocky Road pancake steak, uh, stack with some walnuts in there. We've got some chocolate pieces, and we've also got some syrup. And then in the inside, we've got uh, some marshmallows just for that gooeyness. Oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna just dive right in. I'm not even gonna replate. Oh, check out the gooeyness. Mm. I love it. Oh, these are cooked perfectly as well. It looks delicious. <laughs> are you fluffy? Mm. Is it fluffy? <laughs> it's fluffy enough. Yeah? Fluffy enough. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's gonna take some beating, my friend. That's delicious. Okay, so talk us through, Chef Linda, your creation this morning. This is a giant uh, pancake or flapjack. Uh, kids love flapjacks, mm -hmm. kids love pancakes, everyone loves pancakes. So it's actually ingredients similar to Tommy's, but the shapes are different and the mission or the goal was different. It's drizzled with honey, mm. um, there's some marshmallows inside. I love marshmallows, I grew up eating a yeah, lot of yeah, marshmallows. Buddy, me too. There's some nuts in there and then some chocolate um, chips in there as well. I like the melt. Um, I like the, the introduction of different textures as yeah. well. You can add strawberries here, peaches, mm. nectarines, it's all up to you. Um, blueberries, just to give it life, more See life. The cream cut through the, through the, you know, the sweetness. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, you're, 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 the way you're chewing says enough, my friend. Yeah. We have you know what it is. You know I love you. It's a hard decision You know today. I love you, girl. <laughs> but with, with something sweet like this, the texture really does make it both absolutely exquisite. I mean, to be honest, it has to be a tie yeah. because I'm not blessed with the culinary yeah. arts, but I'm going to give it to Chef Linda. <laughs> Because he's made me a little bit emotional this morning. <laughs> um, no, you're both superb cooks. You're a winner in this kitchen. You're a winner in any kitchen. You guys need to go out and get this award. I'm so sorry that you are competing against each other. Go and vote for both of them at the Emerge Awards for Best African Chef. Chef. That's a massive, massive yes. title to have. Thank you so much mm. for sharing your magical inspiration. Yeah. Come in here. Love you guys. Thank you for the most amazing culinary hotline. Bling! Ting, ting, ting! <laughs> Thank oh, you. you both are incredible. Well, we need to also let you know that you can be in it to win it when you play Lotto, Lotto Plus One and Lotto Plus Two. And that is for 16 million Rand in total estimated jackpots today. Now, you could become Mzanzi's next millionaire. Now, to stand a chance to make it rain loads of cash this March, Play Lotto for an estimated 7 million Rand. Lotto plus one for 7 million Rand as well. And Lotto plus two for 2 million Rand today. But you need to buy your ticket in order to play. Now you can buy your ticket today in store on the nationallottery.co.za website. You can buy your ticket through your mobile banking or your uh, cell phone banking or mobile app or simply by dialing star 120 star 7529 hash for USSD. All of those details, it is available on our social media channels, so don't get left behind. You've got to Panda Pusher Play Lotto, Lotto Plus One and Lotto Plus Two today to stand a chance to win your share of 16 million Rand in total estimated jackpots this Wednesday. Now we've been teasing you for one more performance and we're about to follow through. Jubilee, Majola and Yoav, they are back with two more performances to end off our day. Yeah, so this, uh, this next tune is a song that um, we haven't released it yet. It will be the next single, I believe. And um, it starts with, uh, with the beat kind of like this.
Cause I've been running, 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 running. Can you feel my heart? I've been running, 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 running. Can you feel my heart? I've been running, 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 running. Can you feel my heart? Some were jaded, I confess, but I'm naive about it. Give it space and time, change my life if need be. Share my broken songs. So solitude departs oh, I've been running, 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 running. Can you feel my heart? I've been running, 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 running. Can you feel my heart? Save me, just wherever you are. Cause I've been running, 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 running. Can you feel my heart? You guys, you have taken us on a journey. You have told your story. You have lived your truth. I'm going to run out of superlatives because you are just <laughs> too amazing. Thank you so much. Take a bow, gents. Absolutely brilliant. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Cassidy, thank you for joining us today, you bringing me. your energy and your spunk. We've really enjoyed having you here as well. <laughs> thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Oh, oh, and you are destined for big things, girl. Thanks. Stand-up comedy, go and own it. I have a feeling mm -hmm. we have a, a star <laughs> being born right now. We'll see you tomorrow to hopefully revel in a lovely day off. We'll see you then. Ciao. Cheers. Well done. Thanks. Elevate your custard game with the all-new vanilla-flavoured Clover Custard. So creamy and smooth, it makes all the other desserts a little jelly. Another feel-good production.